The Bible calls the church the pillar, the ground of truth. If we don't talk about these truths on the ground of truth, we're in trouble. Hallelujah. Well, if that was for Anthony or Noah, can we do it better for Jesus? Hallelujah. I mean for Jesus. That's not good enough. I said that's not good enough. It's still not good enough. Is that the best you have for Jesus? Nobody's shouting. Nobody's jumping. Nobody's running. Hallelujah. Praise God. Lift your hands in worship of his name wherever you under the sound of my voice. Give him the fruit of your lips. Magnify him. Now this is beyond the song or a sound on the rhythm. There's nothing wrong with those things. But I want your worship to come from your heart to his ears. Praise God. Worship is actually truly to the audience of one. To the audience of one. Let him hear your worship. Let him hear your praise. Give him the praise that is due his name. We honor you sovereign and omniscient one. Blessed be your name, King of glory. Blessed be your name, King of glory. Just take the tweeters down a bit, that's all. Blessed be your name, King of glory. That's fine. Blessed be your name, King of glory. We honor you and we worship you. Who is getting ready for the word this morning in worship? Give him the praise that is due his name. He's worthy. He's the God who kept you alive. He's a God who kept you strong. Hallelujah. Day unto day, uttereth speech. Night unto night showeth knowledge. Make it is the power of a catose pranikis katambranande koskabadia. To you be the praise and glory. In Jesus' name we have worship. It's in Jesus' name that we have worship. Father God, we've come to you today, and as scripture doth imply, and we reaffirm that unto you shall the gathering of the people be. I ask in the name of Jesus that our worship has been accepted as a sweet smelling savor, holy and acceptable in your sight. Bless us in this service. Change stories in Jesus' name. Can you give God another praise if you can? Amen. Please, I want you to leave your seat and greet somebody with and in the fellowship of Jesus Christ. My sound is fine now. With and in the fellowship of Jesus Christ. Hug on somebody, love on somebody. Amen, 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 amen. Love on somebody and hug on somebody. Praise God. Good to see you in the house of God. Good to see you in the presence of God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Amen, amen, and amen. Amen and amen and amen and amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Okay. Quite some greeting this morning, you see. Amen. Are we done? All right. Quickly this morning, because of the brevity of time that we have and the assignment that I believe I've received of the head of the church, I'd like for you to um, pay close attention. Do you have your prayer points? Have you received any? You've received. You've received. Okay. Please, let me make this announcement before we begin to teach. God instructed about Thursday or Friday that um, the prayer chain for today should be intercession. Where we pray for people. Now look at the scripture, Job 42 and verse number 10. It says, and the Lord, can we read together? Job 42.10, look at the screen, 2-3, go. And the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends and did what? And the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. That will be your experience. I said that will be your experience in Jesus' name. So please, for the church that is online, we'll welcome you in a bit. I'd like for you to follow the link right now. Do we have it on the screens right now? Media. Do we have this in right now on Facebook and YouTube? You said you were going to handle that. You have it? All right, so please, for the church that is online, copy this link, and I want to restate. This link is safe and anonymous, and it can be traced back to you. So nobody will get to know your identity. Just click the link and drop your prayer point, and we'll be giving it to somebody who will be praying for you for one week. All right, and for the people on ground, please do that. Is that clear enough? Is that clear enough? So I have a few instructions. I hope everybody's here. Nobody is missing this service. Uh, praise God. Um, there was a woman who um, was trusting God for the fruit of the womb. 
and uh, the anointing came upon my father in the faith uh, some there are some theological arguments about that people say um but you are, you have the anointing on your inside it doesn't have to come upon you all those are theological arguments there are times that the thing comes like a cloak and he came and he looked at the choir stand he didn't see her and that thing lifted and he didn't come like that again for one year and when he asked after the service where did you go she said i was pressed he said wow my pastor can be very strong he said there are some are some urine that are not too normal praise god <laughs> and another time the move came again and she was there he just took his agbada placed on her and she conceived not that she conceived there you saw me praise god the power of god came upon her and she conceived so there are moments and there are moments so if you are here make sure you're on ground partaking of this bread of life so i have a few instructions number one Okay, the other one is a prayer point we'll pray before we take the corporate prayer. Um, I don't know, but I sense that somebody here, God wants you to take seriously your dreams. God doesn't lead us in the New Testament by dreams. But how many of you know there are some things we we'll call dreams that are actually revelations? How many of you have experienced that before? Take note of them. If they are not favorable, do not keep quiet. It is a mistake. Many years ago, my biological father's friend saw himself alive, buried alive, pastor of a church, buried alive, and they were kneeling the coffin and he was inside there. So when he woke up, he didn't just keep quiet and say, I'm seated with Christ in heavenly places. You know what he did? Have I said that before? He got up, made some prophetic declarations, and wrote a book, and I saw the book. I read the book. The title of the book, you want to guess? This is the title, and I quote, If you refuse to die, nobody will bury you. That's a good response to a negative dream. And the Lord brought this about 2.30 a.m. to my spirit that I should tell some people here, I don't know who you are, there must be a witness in your spirit if this is for you. You should take your dreams seriously. If they are positive, emphasize it. If they are negative, dismantle it. Did you hear what I said? If they are negative, dismantle it. We are not ignorant of the devices of the enemy. All right, so let's go to the word of God. Help me welcome a precious son. He's here, Mr. Maiwa. He's a faithful son. Uh -huh. I don't welcome rebels like this. I welcome faithful sons. He's a faithful son wherever he is. You know, Reverend Yomi was asking after him, and I told him, he said, I hope he's faithful. I said, he's, he's even more faithful than some people on ground. Amen. So, yeah. uh, you didn't hear that, right? That wasn't you, not you, some people on ground. Please celebrate him. And my doctor, Mrs. She's now a medical doctor. Praise God. The word of the Lord has come to pass. Wow. So that is Dr. Tijani or Dami Tijani. Uh, put your hands together for God. So how do we put it? Dr. D, what, what's your abbreviation? Do you have a... Um, Tijani Oe. Oe. That's Dr. Tijani Oe. Praise God. Amen to Jesus. <laughs> I like that. Oh, e. So I'm going to change your name on my phone quickly. Not quickly, but um, surely. First Peter chapter 5. Please help me welcome the church that is online. We celebrate you. Thank you for joining us on Facebook, YouTube, Mixeller. We're not on Telegram, right? No more Telegram. All right, praise God. Thank you for uh, joining us on all those channels. We trust that the same anointing that is here will overflow to you in a very powerful way. Somebody say amen. So first Peter chapter number five, first Peter chapter number five. Let's read from verse eight. This was the text we used yesterday. First Peter chapter five and verse number eight. As much as possible, make sure that there is order in the house for a free flow of what God is about to do. Let's read eight through ten. If you found it, please let's read the word together in the concert. Two, three, go. Be sober, be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. Next verse. Whom resists steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. Next verse. But the God of all grace, who had called us unto eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that ye have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. Somebody say amen. How many of you want to be settled by God? I want us to read verse 10 again with some, with some uh, more life. Praise God. I know you're reading with life, but more life. Two, three, go. Let's take it again. But the God of all grace, 
who has called us unto eternal glory. Can you stop? I want, can we make it personal? Two, three, go. But the God of all grace, who has called me unto eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that you have suffered a while. Stop. How many of you put me there for suffering? You did that. So say that. After this teaching, you say that more with confidence. All right, let's go. After you have suffered a while, two, three, go. After that, I've suffered a while. <laughs> make me perfect establish strengthen me and settle me somebody shout amen. amen sweet holy spirit in the few moments that we have i ask for revelation knowledge to flow forth freely unhindered and unchecked by any outside or demonic force i ask in the name of jesus christ that i'm anointed to teach your people are anointed to hear this atmosphere is anointed and conducive for the ministry and the sowing of your word i ask in the name of jesus that there will be revelation that will be applicable to the situations of your people thank you because yokes will be broken burdens will be lifted people will step into their liberty that is in christ to the praise of the glory of your name upon this truth i declare that jesus is glorified and the church is edified jesus name god's people said please you may be seated briefly in the presence of god there are two segments to this service and um we kick off with the first one but we'll, we'll be closing um please can i state that we may be a little bit uh, beyond 11 30 is that fine yes, all right beyond 11 30 that'll be fine take me back to my scripture so how many of you were online yesterday let me see your hand if you were online yesterday all right good so do i need to do a recap or is this fine it's fine who said it's fine oh, praise god so i shouldn't do a recap okay so let me go okay it says be sober be vigilant because your adversary the devil as a roaring lion you saw you how many of you remember the explanation as a roaring lion so the devil is not a lion but the effect of his roaming in the life of a believer is the same effect that a roaring lion has in a physical space so when a lion is roaring one of the things you observe is that there's no activity people are afraid and there's no result i don't want to go into all of that so he says be, be sober be vigilant because your adversary the devil as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour next verse is my case in point whom resist can we read together verse nine two three go whom resist steadfast in the faith knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world verse 10 let's read two three go but the god of all grace who had called us unto eternal glory by christ jesus after that we have suffered a while make you perfect establish you and strengthen and settle you do you observe the phrase after that you have suffered a while after that you have suffered a while now this is a part where i, I know there's no african christian or white christian but for the purpose of understanding please permit me to speak uh, in geographical terms hence um one of the issues with african believers you understand what i mean now by that believers in africa is that when we hear some things we are quick to say god forbid how do we say it in our local vernacular to fear how do you say it? to fear is it to fear help me now to fear oh is evil ah no praise god uh, the reason why i said no is i'm not good with language but you know what to fear means okay god forbid what do you say in yoruba is there any other tribe here you don't know your own do you know what you say in your language Benima. okay you're not Benin. you're in between you don't know what you say ah uh, mrs Farrell. what is god forbid in your language you don't know Oh God, I take consolation in this fact that I'm not the only one that doesn't know some things. I'm consoled. Amen. Now, it's, it's very easy to say, go forbid, I will not suffer. But the Bible says, after that you have suffered a while. Let, let me tell you something. I want to say something that is very strong, but it's true. You are not going to be settled until you have suffered. Ah, Pastor, why are you saying this? Are we state it in the bible again then begin to teach after that you have suffered a while so the settling comes after the suffering now the question is which suffering after that you have suffered a while so i want to ask the question and i want you people to respond to me who is suffering who because if you don't answer this question if your theology is not right on this you will not be able to victor over the challenges and the problems of your life so who will suffer the believer you you must answer just give me the answer that you know. Satan or God? Life. Who else again? 
Is it Satan? You will talk. Hmm? The challenges of the righteous. So, is it Satan behind it? Huh? Is it Satan behind the challenges? Huh? So, after that, you have suffered a while. So, this suffering is from where? I'm talking about the source of the suffering. Satan. So, that means God will permit Satan to suffer a believer so that he can settle the believer. Is that a good equation? No, 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 no. Don't just, oh, you know why some of you are saying no, some? Uh, no, this cannot be right theologically. I, I want us to just look at the text. Who settles the believer? Who suffers the believer? So he said it's not clear from the passage. So this is where we need teaching ministry. Is that okay? But if you agree that the suffering is from Satan, but you know the settling is from God now. Eh? So where's the suffering from? The other side. Who said the other side? <laughs> okay. So I need two strong men. Where's your husband? I wanted to use him. To do is that work? Okay. I needed that his chest today in service. So tell him he missed acting in church for the word of God to have flesh. He doesn't say the word was made flesh. <laughs> Praise God. Who is strong? I need two rugged men. If you don't stand up, I'll stand you up myself. Two rugged men. Don't be caught. If he's not rugged, he's wearing white. Rugged men. No, that one is gentle. If I look, he has started writing notes. I'm not, I'm not teaching yet, but <laughs> revelation is coming. <laughs> Insight is coming. Revelation is coming, and I've not started teaching. <laughs> you understand that? I begin. Praise God. <laughs> that guy is he has, he's hearing Rema. <laughs> he's a quiet. Say, Pastor must not call me. You. <laughs> I understand you're a quiet man. Okay. So I'm going to call you. You are adding weight. You should be strong. <laughs> so I write on to young men because you're strong. Hmm. Who's stronger? Footballer. But, okay, you have um, football injury. Can you stand? Kachi, can you, can, you, are you, can you do some rough work? Get that, come. Give Kachi a hand. Come. Come, 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 quickly. She goes in now. Um. <laughs> I'm sure you're wondering why you sat in front today. Um, no, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's Dapo. Can you do it? Oh, yeah, give Dapo a hand. Let him come. <laughs> so, I want to explain. I'm not a Nollywood producer. I want to, or a Kingdom Wood producer. I want to explain where the suffering is from. If you don't know where the suffering in this text is from, you see, that statement I made will be troubling when I said you must suffer before you are settled. So we need to understand the source of the suffering and the suffering itself. So, wow, I like your shoe. Praise God. I like good things. Sorry I had to say that. Come. Come. So what you do is um, who should push who? Who should push who? You will push him and he will resist you. Stay now. Verse 9. Go to verse 9. Ah, you have, you have left your ministry. Verse 9. Somebody read verse 9. Two, three, go. Whom what? Resist. resist. Steadfast. So I want you to act this one now. You resist him. Steadfast. So apply pressure. I'm going to ask you a question. I don't know how you want to do it, but maybe you lock your fist. I don't know how you want to do it, but fight. That, don't fight. Just push. Push. Do it. Uh, he's, you are not resisting. You are not resisting. So another person, no, 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 come, come, come. No, no, no. I actually knew this was going to happen. Hold on. I need two guys. Let's begin with one. Come. So he was able, he wasn't sucked. No, no, I want to kill him. You will stay and resist. Go behind him. Behind him. Make sure that this man is resisted. 
steadfast. Or go. Aha. Good. Don't stop. Don't stop. I've not even started. Don't stop. Don't stop. All right. So I want to ask a question. Do you have a mic? Give me that mic. Media. Fast. Sound man. Wrong. Wrong. I have not. I've, have I rehearsed this with you before? No. Talk. Are you. Give him some. Take. Are you heaving in any way? You know what it means to heave? Talk. Talk. Is there sound in this, my sound man? Yes. Okay. Are you heaving? Why are you heaving? Was there any strain here? Yes. You're sure? The suffering of the believer is in resisting Satan. Not in the affliction of Satan. It is when Satan is walking, there's a suffering in resisting. That's why it says, whom resists steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same affliction is accomplishing your brethren that are in the world. Next verse. Media, quickly. Verse 10. It says, but the God of all grace, who had called you unto eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that you have suffered a while, this suffering is not Satan afflicting you with cancer. It's not Satan suffering you. It's you resisting the devil. There's a suffering attached to resisting the devil. Let me, let me give you a few examples. Um, how many of you know of any lady that, uh, I say this respectfully, because the Bible says anyone who is in Christ Jesus, is uh, all things are passed away and all things have become new. If you know a sister that used to live by Aristos, am I correct? Is that what they call it? Aristos. All right. So uh, an Aristo is somebody who has, is that an illegal relationship? It's an illegal relationship. So, like, of course, all Aristos are usually married now. See? Sugar daddies are married. So, this man has a wife and has children. Is that okay? Are you following me, please? They are still here. He has a wife. He has children. And um, he sees this young pumpkin. You know, they have good names that they call them. My pumpkin. My, uh, what was that one that went on social media? My jello fries and things like that. Praise God. Amen. Amen. My pumpkin, my yellow banana, funny, funny, funny things. And he likes the girl. And he says, just don't worry. You just be my... Do they actually propose? What do they say? You don't know. <laughs> you passed the test. Amen. Okay. But I assume they, they must make their intentions know. Huh? So you be my girlfriend. Or side chick. Now, this girl goes to Dubai every weekend. I don't know why Dubai is a destination, but praise God, I think it's Dubai. So every weekend she goes to Dubai. Her body cream changes. Her cream can pay some people's house rent in Okearo with due respect. Now, I've seen ladies, follow me carefully, please. I've seen ladies that um, there's a cream for the hand. There's a cream for the face. I wondered when I saw it. And there's a cream for the normal body. And there's a towel, and that's normal. There's a towel for the face that should be different from the body. So, ex so maintaining this girl has now been brought away from abject poverty and she's living the cream life. When she flies, she doesn't fly economy. She flies first class because of the person she's dating. And the man would just say, just go there, wait for me. I'll meet you on Tuesday. So she leaves Sunday night. No, Sunday is a holy day. She leaves Monday morning, gets there, and then the man comes Wednesday and spends three nights and he must not leave the hotel with them pastor how do you know well praise god we are pastors we hear things amen yes so he leaves the hotel and then she comes back home nobody knows and she begins to show the picture on ig and all of that and then she comes to church and hears the gospel and she becomes born again really born again and if she sits under a pastor like me who will tell you that sin is sin there's grace for you, but you can't be living in sin that grace abound. Then she begins to change. And there's a washing of the water by the word. And she goes to the man. Um, I don't even know what she'll be calling that man. What would she call him? Okay, they call him baby. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Full grown old man. Baby. It's a, it's a name that um, shows you something is wrong. Baby. And the man says, yes, my pumpkin. Um, no, after she's born again, she can't call baby. No, she can't call him. The name has to change. <laughs> say um, for my baby or oh, ex-baby no it can't be ex-baby 
um, Mr. Gwenga, and then he, and he knows something is wrong. Mr. Gwenga, ah, uh kilo -uh. The rest is in the spirit. <laughs> are you, why are you calling me? Why are you calling me by my first name? Uh, are you okay? No, 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 no. I'm okay. Do you have any bills to pay? No. He said, um, I want to tell you that I'm now born again. Not only am I born again, I have the Holy Ghost. I pray in the spirit, I speak in tongues, there's a new life in me. So sir, I can't be sleeping with you anymore. For two reasons. I can't be sinning against God and sinning against another woman somewhere. Because I'm going to have my family tomorrow. I usually, I can imagine their response. They will start laughing. I wanted to ask, can I have a witness? But I know there's no witness. Amen. Oh, I hope there's no witness. Praise God. You begin to laugh, right? So, I'm sure this next thing you hear is, um, all these pastors, you're going to follow these pastors. The, the ones they do is worse. Oh, you know what I'm saying? All these pastors, their own is worse. Be, stay there, let them be deceiving you. Okay, let me give you one week. Go and think where. When, you are, when, they, when they craze, come off of your head, come back. Then one week later, he calls. What happened? He said, I told you I'm born again. I've seen Jesus. I've received him. There's new life in me. Now, what's his next line of attack? So, if he gave her a house, she has to leave the house. Is that correct? She has to leave the house. Usually in Lekki, praise God, but uh, maybe anywhere. <laughs> she leaves the house. He stops sending her money. She no longer goes to Dubai. Now, what is she doing? Come back. Come back. Now, go back to what you were doing. Take the mic. Resist him. Apply pressure. Good. Stay there. Just keep doing what you're doing. So this is the man and the force behind the man, the wealth behind the man, the money, the exposure. This is the girl with the new life in Christ. She's resisting sin. Are you getting what I'm saying? She's resisting the offer. Will she face pain? Will she suffer a while? Now, that's what I mean by a Christian must suffer before it's established. She must suffer. And listen, God will allow her to suffer. And I too think she should suffer. I'll tell you why. Not she has to oh god she has to because it was a false life she has to come back to reality so she has to now know what it means to work and manage your salary she has to know what it means to wake up 4 a.m and go to work and stay in Lagos traffic for another three and a half hours she has to know that now after God looks at her and sees that this girl is serious and she wants to go through this, the Bible promises something. Anybody who suffers for righteousness sake must be settled. That's why it says after you have suffered a while, now you get the first prophecy I told you, you must suffer before you are settled. There are things you must go through. Give them a hand. <laughs> Hebrews 12.4, media quickly. Did you get that so far? I'll tell you a few people who suffered in the Bible. Now, this suffering is resisting sin. Notice you are suffering on the grounds of resisting the enemy. Not that Satan is afflicting you. No, so there's this statement, quickly, as quickly as you can, Hebrews 12.4. There's this statement we heard when we were growing up. I don't know if it was when we were growing up or some few years ago. That Satan is on God's payroll. How many of you have heard that? Satan is on God's payroll. That statement is not just on scripture, but it's, it is unsafe. It means that God would take a Satan, employ him to afflict his child and pay him. That's a dangerous statement. He doesn't do that. So Satan is not on God's payroll. God will not permit a believer to go through sufferings under the hand of Satan. However, a believer in resisting Satan will go through some pain like this guy went through. All right. But after that, the believer will be settled. Now, I'll give you uh, a few. I'll come back to this scripture, Hebrews 12 4. I want to give you some examples before I read the scripture. Number one is Moses. Do you know what Moses did? The Bible says Moses refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He resisted it. Did Moses suffer a while? Talk to me, church. Did he suffer a while? Oh, he suffered. He became a shepherd boy. He was formerly the prince of Egypt. Let's come to Abraham. Some of you think that it was not, you, some of you think that what the king of Sodom offered Abraham was not tempting. No, it was. It was. The king of Sodom said, come, let's divide this thing. Abraham said, I've lifted up my hands. 
to the God of heaven. And I will not take anything from you to the last shirt of your shoe. Lest you said you have made Abraham rich. After Abraham resisted that offer from the king of Sodom, what happened next? What happened next? Should we read that? Let's read that. I want you to see that. I want you to see that. Genesis 1420. Genesis 1423. Some of you are going through the suffering of resisting the enemy, but you think it's God inflicting you. Genesis chapter number 14 and verse number 23. Maybe I'm waiting for you. Genesis 14, 23. Good. Can we read together? I will not take from a thread even to the shoe latchet and that I will not take anything that is thine. Keep reading with me. Lest thou shouldest say, I have made Abram rich. Next verse. Save only that which the young men have eaten and the portion of the men which went with me. Anna Eshkol Amaram. Let them take their portion. Next verse. After these things. Somebody say after these things. The word of the Lord came unto Abraham in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abraham, or Abraham, I am thy shield, and I'm thy what? Exceeding great reward. Can you see a reward after resisting something? Now you must understand that the king of Sodom was not just a physical king, he represented a man outside the covenant. That's why when he resisted the king of Sodom, he accepted the gifts from the king of Salem. I'll say that one more time. He resisted the king of Sodom. And accepted bread and wine from the king of Salem. There is a suffering in resisting sin. Jesus resisted him in the wilderness. Am I correct? Where is Jesus today? Is he not settled on his throne forever? So the suffering of a believer, of a believer is not Satan inflicting the believer. The suffering of a believer is when the suffering that is attached to resisting to push him back. When he was pushing these two guys, he was heaving. Now, somebody outside who is looking at him, heaving, say, they begin to say, they serve God. They don't understand that that heaving and that thing he's doing is a down payment for his next level. That's why you need to be careful how you judge people. You don't mock people. So the suffering of a Christian is the suffering of resisting Satan. Let me show you something now. Watch this. It says, you have not yet resisted unto blood. This scripture is in your Bible. You have not yet resisted unto blood. Now, what does blood connote? Is that pain and sacrifice? Talk to me, church. Is that pain and sacrifice? You have not yet resisted unto blood, striving against sin. So can you see that there's a pain in resisting sin? Just like that lady who will now know what it means to earn, what's the basic salary in Lagos? Basic salary, average salary in Lagos. 50K, really? Let's say 30. Okay, so somebody has been flying first class, going to Dubai, now comes to a 35,000 naira salary. Now, according to the word of God, you will go through that. The Bible says, and Jesus learned obedience through the things that he suffered. Not that Satan suffered him. The suffering he went through trying to resist the temptations of the devil and walking in the will of God. Is that understood? I need you to understand what the suffering of a Christian is. It's not that Satan, God allows Satan to use the hammer over your head. That's not scriptural. But there's a suffering that you will go through. It says you have not yet resisted unto blood. Which means you are resisting sin, but you have not resisted unto blood. The striving against sin. Give me the Amplified. Let's look at this. Amplified of the scripture. Hebrews 12, 24. Hebrews 12, 24. Do you have it? Oh, did I say 24? Sorry. 4. Hebrews 12, 4. AMPC version. And have not what struggled and fought agonizingly against sin. So can you see the suffering of a believer? Let me bring this word home. Um, my pastor spoke about a man who was brought to court. A few persons in his workplace organized and duped the company of about 400 to 500 million naira. Am I correct? Yeah, thereabouts. If you, in case you hear the story, I've forgotten the exact figure, but in hundreds of millions. 
So there was one man that they needed to ask, and if the man said these people did not do it, they would have struck out the case. Meanwhile, they went to this man before and asked him, Alpha, if you just just cooperate with us, so why are you 150? Now, 150 looks like it steals by moonlight. Do you know what 150 million will do for you now? I want you to think before I go on. Think of the alert of 150 on your phone now and it's fully yours. And the man that is offered 150 million lives in a broke down apartment somewhere. You know every father's dream? He wants to give his children the best education, give his children the best life. And he looks at the opportunity, 150M, but it's a shady deal, and he's born again. He refused. When the thing backfired, it became, there was a court case, but they just needed him. The case was so much that it was very sensitive to the point that they just needed him to state that it was a yes or it was a no. If he had said no, they would have been free. So when they brought him to the stand, his son drove in the car with him to the courtroom. Meanwhile, his son had heard the entire story because every father must teach his children, not just in school. He was telling the boy what was happening and all of that. So when he got there and sat in the witness box, is that what they call it? Witness stand, I beg your pardon. And he said, uh, they asked him a question and he said, it is not true. There was no transaction like that. It was fraud. He left 150 million. And when he got back to the car, his son asked him, Daddy, how long did you, how hard did you think before you brought that, um, before you arrived at that conclusion? He said, son, there was nothing to think. A lie is a lie. Did you hear what I said? Son, there was nothing to think. A lie is a lie. Now, he has lost 150 million. Is that correct? But according to God's word, he will be settled. Listen, it's a transaction in the spirit. Now, my question to you is, is, what are you suffering now for your settlement? What are you refusing is what I mean. Now for your settlement. Because many times we come to church, we give testimonies, but people don't understand the details of a testimony. Can you really tell us the details of this, your testimony? If we begin to ask and investigate for details of testimony, there will be a problem in the body of Christ. Because I've discovered that testimony time, sometimes, I'm not just speaking about this local assembly, and it doesn't happen here. At least I know of you, I can investigate very well. There's no way you can come with a tithe of 50 million naira and I accept it first. When I know that your tithe was 2-5. We'll ask some questions. Your tithe of 50 million means, means you made half a billion. I beg your pardon, 500 million. That's half a billion. Huh? So you, will, you must be explainable. Oh, I did this, I provided this service and all of that. Then the church can receive your time. One of my mentors, eh, I'll say this with wisdom, quotedly. After one Sunday service, there was an alert of billions, church account, offering. Over one billion, I forgot to put it, was over one billion. He said this in my presence. He was actually speaking to a few pastors. He said when the alert came, the church accountant called him. Say, said, Pastor, there's a problem. He said, what's the problem? He said, we need to see you now. <laughs> when church accountants tell a pastor, I've had that experience a few times. Pastor, <laughs> we need to talk. What? Go ahead. No, say, Pastor, there's nothing to record. We can't record now until you enter this matter. Pastor, saw the alert. He said, ah. They told, he told them to leave the money. They shouldn't touch the money. By Tuesday, AFCC came. May your offering be like that, too. You didn't say amen. May your offering be like that. Oh, you think it's a bad story? No, it's not a bad story. Legitimate money. They did their findings and they released the money for the church. That's how to do kingdom work. There must be things you refuse before God settles you. It's God. Any great man you see today in the kingdom of God and great women, they refuse things. That's the suffering of the believer. I, I, I just, in those days, in the 80s, women used to refuse to be second wives. God help me. But now, they said they don't mind to be the sixth. But do you observe that I have never seen, except in the movies, 
where a first wife is happy that the fourth one is coming. It's in the movies. And the ones on social media who pretend, I doubt it. No woman wants to share her man. So you look at the fact that if you become the fourth wife, you will access some things. But you look at it and you resist the temptation. The husband God will give you will be pressed down, shaken together, running over. No, I don't mean, you know what I'm saying? I mean the pressed down of the Bible, not pressed down. You know what I mean? Hey God. That's why it's no good to joke with scriptures. I'm talking about <laughs> real, you know what I mean by pressed down? Uh, the way his face is looking, pressed down. That's what I mean, um, Timothy. Pressed down, shaking together, running over, abundant blessing. Praise God. That's what I mean. <laughs> now, a few things I want to share. Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 8. Let's look at this. Now, this is very powerful. Second Corinthians 4, 8. Everybody, please look up and read your Bibles. This would help you. Second Corinthians 4, 8 through 12. Is there anybody under the sound of my voice who is resisting something now? You won't give me the details, just wave your hand. There's, there's something you are resisting that if you accept, we can call it breakthrough, but you know it's no breakthrough. Is there anything you're resisting now? Yeah. One. Who else again? Uh, you should be resisting things by time. Is the indication that your next level of settling is coming. It's like a test to a promotional exam. It's like a promotional exam to another class. What you are resisting currently. Am I resisting things in ministry? Yes. Big time. Every day. <laughs> every day. Every day. Every day. Every day. One pastor, I was, I was, I was, well, I hope I have permission to say, I was in this, I was in, I've been going through a training, ministry training for, um, how many weeks will it last? Did I tell you? Three weeks. Yeah, sure. Okay. I've been going through a ministry training for three weeks. That's why we have not been having workers training after Saturday. Um, master class with some heavy weights in the body of Christ. They sit down and drill you. The class ended at about 8.30 or 9 yesterday in the evening. And one of the teachers, lecturers, great man of God, I will mention his name, the body of Christ, he said one day he was preparing for 31st night. You know, crossover service, we used to light candles in those days. You guys were there? Uh, now, please, I'm not knocking on you. I'm telling you what he said. He said he just heard himself. He heard the voice say, tell them to bring candles. Light it. Let them, all of them will come and take from your own. <laughs> and when they light and they go back, tell them to take it home and let it burn till dawn. And that's how their lives begin to shine. He said the thing was pushing him, pushing him, pushing him. So he was teaching us the importance of a pastor knowing the word of God. He said, but when he searched scriptures, the word of God conflicted with that and he knew it was the voice of a stranger. You understand what I mean by the voice of a stranger? That's how courtism will enter a ministry. And he was able to shut down that voice. So he resisted something. Are you getting what I'm saying? Now, the truth is, in Nigeria and in Africa, if you do that, people will come. People like those things. You know that? Oh, yes. Buy candle. Just buy and come. Your light will begin to shine. People will fill this place. And buy candle. But he resisted that gimmick. You know his gimmick? His gimmick. Now, respect to you and your churches where you used to practice that. I'm not saying it's wrong. I'm just telling you what the pastor said. Even we too. We came from churches where... But our own is that we lit the candle... Once it was Happy New Year. But see Satan now. He said, let them take it home. Let it burn. That's how it will burn. Burn table. People's house will explode. <laughs> you know, one of my, my, there's what they call supernatural ministry. I'll just say this in person. My pastor was, um, then he was a younger pastor. He had a lady he was mentoring who was a member of his church. And he was just, he just, some just told him, leave your house. Leave your church office and go and check that lady. Please don't try it if you're a single pastor. That was that. So he went and he checked. Ah, he knocked, pop, 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 no answer. Knocked and knocked and knocked and knocked and knocked. Ah, no answer. Knocked. So he just began to see smoke. The house was on fire. So he walked inside, broke inside. I think so. When he broke the door, he got there. The woman walked through the night, came home, was sleeping, and put bo used boiling ring to cook beans. It's amazing. 
but that was obtainable in those days. So the beans had melted. <laughs> Jesus Baby is laughing. She insulted your, your favorite food, you know? Praise the God. Boy, the ring and beans. That's a wonderful combination. How long will it take to boil? You know? He burned the whole thing and the place caught fire. She was sleeping. He tapped her. And God said, this is why I told you to come. Now you can go back. So that's what they call supernatural ministry. And may you enjoy that ministry in Jesus' name. Amen. And may you not sleep the sleep of death. Ah, you know that's the sleep of death? That's the sleep of death. There's such a thing as the sleep of death. So now, Second Corinthians chapter 4. I want us to read this gradually. To 8, 2, 3, go, let's go. We are troubled, read, we are troubled of it on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but yet not in despair. Next verse. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Next verse. Always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our bodies. Next verse. For we which live are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. Next verse. So then wo death walketh in us, but life in this way I wanted you to go through. Because if I would asked you before here, who was he referring to? What would you have said? Do you know that whole thing he read was not for Christians? He was talking about the troubles of the people who are called in ministry. Can we go back again? It will make sense. Verse 8. Follow this. That's why I got you to stay here. Follow this. We are troubled on every side. Who is troubled? Yet not distressed. We are perplexed. Who was perplexed? Who is he talking about? Ah, I just showed you the answer. Who was perplexed? Huh? Good. Those in ministry. But not in despair. Next verse. Because I'm sure you thought this scripture was you. No, verse persecuted but not what? Forsaken. Who was persecuted? Mainly the ministers of the gospel. Okay. Cast down but not destroyed. Next verse. Always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our bodies. Next verse. Next verse. Next verse. For we which live are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. Next verse. So death walketh in us, but life in you. So who is suffering here? Huh? The apostles are suffering. You agree it's the apostles? They are suffering. Next verse. We having... Now, if you back up from chapter 1, it talked about the suffering of the Christian and the suffering of the people that are called. So we all go through some sufferings. Now, watch what it says. We having the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believe, and therefore I have spoken. We also believe, and therefore we speak. Please look up. Listen. I plead with you. Listen. What do you do when you are in trouble? What do you do when challenges rise? You saw the list of things Paul called perplexed, distressed, not despair, chained, cast down. Only one human being. Or a few, select, a select few of persons in the body of Christ. Many challenges and many troubles. But Paul did something that the Spirit of God showed me and I want to show you. In the midst of it, Paul quoted scripture. Now say that again. Paul quoted a scripture in the midst of his trouble. I bring to you a mystery that will help you in your challenges. Don't just pray. Get scriptures speaking about the matter and quote it. See. This issue of it is Old Testament. It is Old Testament. It is why your problem is aged in age. I don't need to say that. It is just madness. You know why I call it madness? I'm saying that with humility, but I'm angry in my spirit. Because why do you call scripture? The Bible says, as Second Timothy three sixteen, am I correct? All scriptures given. You know why I thank God for that scripture? Because God knew we would find ourselves in a time like this, where people will use some scriptures. So He says all scriptures. You know where Paul is quoting from? Psalm one one six, I believe. Let's go there. Psalm one one six. Let me show you something. I want to show you the power of speaking scriptures in the midst of your trouble. 
Because oftentimes what we do is when we hear, when we, have, when we find ourselves in challenges, what we do immediately is we just respond, we pray. That's pray. That's correct. It's good to pray. But have you observed Marcus Capriano Cascufa? When Peter was taken, the prayer that the church prayed was from the Psalms. You didn't hear what, you're not hearing what I'm saying, no? Not just open your mind, I bind. Now, there's a place for that. You speak as you're inspired. But when you find yourself in challenges, look for scriptures. Why? The scriptures are already inspired by the Holy Ghost. So Paul is talking about his challenges and he's referring to a text, Psalms chapter 116. 116 verse 10. Psalms of David, good. But I'll tell you, watch this, I will tell you the twist. Did you get the point so far? What should you do in, in the problem? What should you do? Speak what? Scriptures concern that matter. Now, see, it says, I believed, therefore I have, have I spoken. I was greatly afflicted. Now, Paul is finding himself in affliction. What is he doing? He's quoting the scripture that talks about salvation in affliction. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Okay, back up, back up three, four verses. Back up three, four verses. Let me show you something. Three, four verses. Let me show you something quickly. Quickly. Okay. The Lord preserved the simple. Okay, let's, okay. The Lord preserved the simple. I was brought low and he helped me. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Next verse. Return unto thy rest, O my soul, for the Lord had dealt bountifully with thee. This is the midst of trouble. God bringing him out. Watch this. It says, For thou hast delivered my soul from death, mine eyes from tears, and my feet from falling. Next verse, verse 9. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. Now, this is the scripture Paul now quoted. Because this is how this guy's affliction ended. Next verse. It says, I believed. Therefore, I have spoken. I was greatly afflicted. Now, in Paul's case, was Paul going through afflictions? Was Paul going through afflictions? Did Paul pick this scripture? that this man spoke in his own affliction and applied, him, applied it into his own affliction. Are you hearing what I'm saying? There is power in the written word of God for every situation. Joshua chapter 1 and verse 8. I want to give you something for free. Every time you have a challenge, come, come. I want to say something very strong. And I, I don't mean to sound insensitive. I don't care what it is you are going through. If you find two scriptures on that matter, even if it's one year, and you quote it morning and night, morning when you wake up, night before you sleep, it will dissolve. Give me Joshua 1.8. That's the principle. I'm talking scriptures. Not midnight prayer you copy from a devotional. The inspired word of God. Joshua 1.8, we'll come back here. This book of the law will not depart out of them, but thou shalt meditate in it day and night. That thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written in it, for then thou shalt make their way prosperous. You can't quote the scripture and not prosper in your way. Not on Sunday when you come to church alone. Day and night, like a drug. Kenneth Hagin said, the problem with many Christians is that they obey the doctor more than they obey the pastor's prescription of scripture. So the doctor tells you, wake up. How many of you have woken up to take drugs in the midnight? Eight hours. You woke up. Now, can I ask you a question that looks crazy, but is true? What, what if God told you, quote that scripture eight hours, and you have to wake up by 2 a.m.? Will you do it? You know what For some funny grace teaching will tell you it's not that hard and when i do it by 6 a.m no there's a prescription to it is this a prescription is day and night a prescription yes, so let me give you an example what what do you need in your life praise god you need a wife you don't need a wife okay not now you need a wife but not now praise god because you're not celibate Great. Hmm? Okay. He wants to own a construction company of his own because he's, he's a civil engineer. Somebody say amen. Yeah. Is there a scripture you're confessing day and night? I want to show you where Christians are defeated in their problems. This is how it happens. Is there any scripture you have been quoting for at least one year, day and night? Yes, for this. Good. Thank you. I, I, I respect your sincerity. Give him a hand. Sit down. <laughs> Same with all of you. Same with all of you. you don't, do you have a scripture you have been quoting for conception? Let me say it again. Carry a scripture and quote day and night. What? 
Wala, you will be pregnant. Are you? Oh God. That's why I want. I I I I, I want. I don't want to sound like I'm swearing or using cuss words. I am telling you, if it does not happen, I've never said this in my life. I dropped the calling. Why am I speaking like this? I am a practitioner of that truth. Carry the inspired word of God. Speak to the mountain, and you will say to this mountain not to pray. Be thou removed. Specific inspired words, and be thou cast into the sea. He didn't say pray. That's why God was angry with Moses when he struck the rock a second time. Because striking the rock the first time was a prophetic picture of the striking of Jesus, the rock on Calvary's cross. So after he has been crucified, we don't need to strike again, we need to speak. That's what that Moses thing means. So God was prophesying through Moses' ministry what Jesus will do and what he will usher us into. Number one, he will be stricken for our sake. Strike the rock. How many of you know that the rock that followed them was Christ? Talk to me, it was Christ. After that, speak to it. That's why it says, say not in your heart who shall ascend, that is to bring Christ down. You don't need it again. He doesn't need to be born again to be raised and to die again. No. They say, but what said it? What said it? Satan has cheated believers. He doesn't want us to be what Christians. We ca he can make you run about the place looking for solution, but the solution is on your lap. That book. Day and night, if you go, just, just, somebody wants to get married. A lady wants to get married. And she's trusting God for her husband. I know she has been praying, she has been fasting, she has been sowing seeds, and she should do all those things. But does she have at least two scriptures? that she has been quoting since she graduated? I bet you, no. In fact, people stop speaking when they don't see it. But the secret is to keep speaking even when you don't see it. See what Paul is. Paul, the apostle of grace, is quoting the Old Testament in the middle of heat. He, that means Paul is the student of the Bible. You agree. He read about a man in affliction and the man said, I have believed therefore have i spoken paul found himself new testament in a situation he quoted as it is written did he say it he said it as it is written what did jesus used to it is written you don't need gymnastics if you have the word of god on the matter and put it on your mouth you know jesus didn't say i am the living word he spoke it Man shall not live by bread alone. And for every time he spoke the word in response to Satan, Satan could not repeat the question again. Why? Because the word of God settles the matter. Show me. Did, okay. When you are trying to persuade somebody, when the person gives you an excuse, share you with you will look for another way. Bow down and worship me. Ah, that shall worship no other God. He didn't say, Are you sure? You, you can't question the word of God. You can't. So the moment Satan hears it, he knows forever, O oh Lord, thy word is settled. I want to show you the power of quoting scriptures. That's why if you're a, you a believer, you don't know Bible. What I mean you don't know Bible, I don't mean it must be a theologian. There must be a scripture. There's this thing that happened to us when we're growing in the faith and we have stopped it and it is wrong. It is called memory verse. Oh, the power of memory verse. We shouldn't drop it. Memory verse means there's a scripture in your memory per time. There's a scripture you're reciting per time. Go back to having memory verses per week. That this week, not just what pastor taught, this is my memory verse. Memory verse means this is the verse in my memory. That means I became, if I touch you, that's the scripture that will come out. You understand what I'm saying? If somebody hits you in a situation, have you, have you ever meditated on something before and you were talking and somebody calls you and you said what you were thinking about? Has it happened to you? You are thinking about Tinuke. John calls you. Uh, and Tinuke, what did you say? And the, the, you understand know what I'm saying? You understand that one? You understand Tinuke's own enters, eh? But well, it didn't work. Memory verse means that's the verse you are chewing on part time. 
what city i bring you a secret from now till jesus comes have a memory verse you dropped it in kindergarten that's the problem and you observe that that thing empowered your life when you were at that level there was one they gave us the, i am the righteousness of god in fact they turned it into a song we, we have too many weapons in the kingdom of god we are not easy no i am the righteousness of god in christ jesus sin has no power over me i am the righteousness of god in christ jesus do you know that song sin has no power over me i learned it as a boy god has already accepted me to be his very own oh god has already accepted me to be his very own so when you make a mistake and condemnation comes i am the righteousness of god in christ it's working it's working but you know what we do we have more prayer points than scripture that is why we pray amiss somebody asked me pastor why you always read this scripture to pray what what do you want me to do what do you want me to do if i don't read scripture, in fact i am afraid to pray and not have coverage network in scriptures you know why it is the fastest way to begin to pray occultic prayers you will just you find yourself praying crazy things so back to paul paul is quoting from psalm 116 verse 10 but here's the twist to it and god showed me this morning this one i won't lie all right as i was there uh, somebody just told me to sit down in the office before that's why i wasn't here doing the praise it's not really my style and he began to thunder and he showed me something in this verse do you know the man quoted take us back there psalm 116 and verse 10 i believe therefore i have spoken as i was greatly afflicted but when paul was quoting he added his own paul quoted him i believe i have spoken we believe and therefore we speak take me to Paul's own you see when you speak the inspired of the God inspiration will come on what to say personally that will move your own mountain you are inspired from inspiration show me where, where's, where's our text where did Paul could that? that was um, second Corinthians right so let's go that forward you notice that Paul added something oh you're permitted to add you're permitted to add in the sense that you can, you're permitted to make it personal. We having the same spirit of faith according as it is written. I believed. As it is written, he's quoting now. As it is written. Written where? Psalms 116 verse 10. All of you that say it's Old Testament. That's the apostle of grace. You cannot be more graceful than Paul. That's, this, that's a teaching that wants to cut you short from the fullness in Christ. When the Holy Ghost came and people were confused, some people sat, let me tell you what happened in Pentecost that day, when the Holy Ghost fell. Somebody sat down that, okay, you, you are from, uh, when the woman is married, she does not go from my village, eh? Uh, okay. So where are you from now? Okay, you're from Abriba, good. Her husband is from Abriba. And have you heard that name before? You've not heard that name before, praise God. So, during Pentecost, Somebody like Maya was praying in the spirit and he was speaking Abriba fluently. And she heard, knowing that this guy is not from the East, not speaking Abriba fluently. And he knows that this guy, why are you people looking at me? You didn't hear that men heard people speaking? You don't know? Say, you know those people that speak of oh, You know that language, I don't call their name. They are here. Eh? Oh, can I feel more You know those languages. They are here. That's how some of you don't believe that's the language. That's the language they are here. That's it. You've not heard them. Have you heard them? You heard them now? Huh? When they finish, they shoo. Men heard people speaking Isoko. <laughs> Urobo. And they were not from Delta State. So confusion came. So Peter had to stand up. The Bible says, and Peter stood up with the eleven. I said, by the way, don't be confused. Joel chapter 2. This is that. Joel. Is it New Testament? <laughs> Stay there. Be following those lies. Don't read your testament. Go and cut your Bible now. Or carry Gideon's New Testament. 
God is doing something from the old to, a, from, to the new. A wise cry brings out of the treasure chest things both old and new. Not just new. Old and new. You will miss out on the, do you, do you What people call Old Testament, do you know the treasures that are there? Why do you call the Lord is my shepherd? It's Old Testament. Leave it. Oh, well, I shall not want. No, that's the law. Go on, go ahead and keep wanting. Go back to the scriptures, whether Old Testament or New Testament, all scripture is given by the inspiration of God. Look for a scripture that is talking about your case and practice it under Joshua 1 a day and night. Come back and tell me if you don't get a testimony. I'm not that, see, I see what I'm saying boldly. You will, you will get it. You will get it. I may not be too boastful on a prayer point, but I'll be boastful on a scripture that you get back in your prayer point. Because it will work. Paul is quoting Psalms. And he added his own. Can we continue? He says, we therefore having the same spirit of it according to what it is. You must know what is written. You must know what is written that suits your case. Ah, that's why if you are not a Bible Christian, I don't know how you are going to survive this last day. So. What's his name? This father in the faith, Bill Winston, needed a jet. I don't need a jet. Some of you, yet, praise God, I like that. I don't need a jet yet. Some of you wonder, what do pastors need jet for? You will understand when you get their schedule. I don't want to mention them. Secular artists can use jets. And crisscross and go to four concerts. And that's fine. But the minister of the gospel, who, who needs to be in four places, preaching the most important news on earth, should not use one. You are kidding me. So the fact that I don't need one yet does not mean it's not needed. It's needed by some people. Do you agree? So be wasting any dead eject. And he said he had been trusting God for it. And one man came to preach in his church and just walked up towards him and quoted the scripture. The birds of the air will carry your voice. He went back and started teaching. You know, the Bible says the voice of the Lord is upon the waters, the word. The Almighty thundered. He began to think about it. He said, Come, come, come. Why did this man come to me quoting the scripture? I think it's in Job also. Yeah, and he, as the man was teaching, he opened the scripture and he shouted, The jet is he playing not like a bird? What is he doing? Is he not speaking the word of God to the nation? You see that? The, are you hearing what I'm saying? He said, Not too long, the jet came. Why? Scripture is the ground. Once you find it, it will come to pass. You can see, you can be a prayer warrior for 15 years and not see results. If you don't pray according to the word of God. There are moves that came in the body of Christ. The CAC Baba, uh, what, what do you call it? Um, Ayo Baba Lola fame and all of that. Great move of the Holy Ghost. And there was the SU move. Was SU before Ayo Baba Lola? After, right? I, I attended SU, in case you don't know, especially the house fellowships. Morning devotion was a must. Who born you? How did I attend it? I, I lived with an aunt that was SU. No matter, I don't know what you want to say. You must come out for that. There's one Igbo song, because that was when I was in school. So uh, before I got a place on campus, I had to stay with my aunt. They're in the US now. Okay. And uh, that, that my uncle was a uh, uh, reverend with the Anglican Communion in Washington, D.C., if I'm not mistaken. So his students were here then, before they left. I'll never forget this song. Once you, if you are sleeping and you hear, you know, first, there's no song. Your hands. Your hands. Mm. The, your, this, the clap is rhythm. The clap is prelude. Service has started. It's opening prayer. Then I heard this song. Toya, and that song has never left me. Toya, Obudike, Toya, only one be. Ladies and gentlemen, no keyboard, no drum, but anointing. Not called anointing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I became I got it right, right? Anoint. You ain't. There was a move. I 
and then the word of faith move came. Where people we just sit down like this, they may not even spend too much time in prayer. And they just begin to declare Mark eleven twenty three. Praise God. I'm free from sickness and disease. I have all my needs met. Hallelujah. And people began to see the word of God walk, and it looked like it was walking faster than devotion. You didn't hear what I said. You didn't hear what I said. It looked like it was walking faster than devotion. Confession. Pa, 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 pa. That's how some people now took it overboard. They now started claiming people's wives, claiming people's husbands, claiming people's cars. You didn't grow up in the time where people would touch your car and say, I claim it. Ah, you didn't see it. We grew up. You would not see somebody touch your car and say, I claim it. Not that somebody is snapping for ID. That one is okay. You're something tapping. Father, I claim it. Not that they are claiming your type, they are claiming your car. They took the message overboard. So you know what we did? We lost the moves. When a move comes, we throw this move out for the next move. But it's supposed to be a company of moves. That's why prayer warriors got angry at the word of faith movement. Because they were having devotion. But the word of faith people were having results. So they stopped. Some got frustrated. But it's supposed to be all of them. You have your devotion. But you also have your priestly ministry of confession. And we shall give ourselves wholly to the ministry of the word and prayer. You can't be word, 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 word. You don't have a prayer life. And you cannot be prayer, 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 prayer. In fact, let me tell you something. My pastor said, and it's true. If you will choose one, choose the word. Don't choose one. If you choose prayer without the word, vroom, let me tell you what that is. Without seatbelt, you hit your gas, you enter occultism. The word of God is the seed built in the spirit. Now the problem is that if you have the word of God, you don't have a prayer life, you won't go too far. But you are safe. You didn't hear what I said. The seed belt is on. You won't send the too far. You'll be there, but you'll be safe. You'll be okay. Jesus will come and meet you there in the car, rapture you home, and you will see his face and you will love him. But you won't change levels. But that you're a praying person without the word of God, you will... That's how you go. That's how, that's how you see some people come and say, one angel walked this morning and he said, my name is Miracle. No. 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 The angel walked and when he walked, he told me my name is Miracle. His name is Success. We have come from the presence of the Father. From that day, you begin to hear angels. Another day, your father will appear that was dead and say that he's an angel. Before you know, you enter into strength. But if you have the word of God, you will know that no angel, listen to this, you are not Mary. They can't be coming and telling you their name. No. No. In the New Testament, it's not so. In the Old Testament, it was so. In the New Testament, they are sent to minister for those, not to those. Did you read that in your Bible? For those, not to those who are heads of salvation. So they carry out their ministries for you. Stop looking for interactions with them. Now, you see, the word of God will give you a safe practice if you read scriptures. Start seeing different things. You, don't you know that Satan has also gone? Now, if you know the scripture, you'll be safe. It has also gone as an angel of light. So you will know that it's not every angel you see, but it's an angel from his presence. Because you have the seat belt of the word of God. So Paul says, we having the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believed and therefore I have spoken. Is that what the man quoted? So this is Paul's own improvisation. We also believe. <laughs> Praise God. We too, we believe. We believe. So that means, who can give a scripture from the Old Testament that was personal to the person when he was quoting it? Give me a scripture. I have some off by heart, but I just want to pick one from here. Okay, so God, what's the scripture? What do you say? You've taught my hands to war and my fingers to fight, and you are fighting a battle. And you now put your own. You will put your name on. Don't say we. Put your name. Go deeper than Paul went. Anthony Chibuzo, preach on, on her. God teaches you to war and your fingers to fight forget about the, the second name make sure you don't call me that and my fingers to fight make it personal 
my pastor's son was dying. He had a vision. He had a dream. You know, some of you have dreams and you don't know it was the vision. It was later. Have you, have you been there? So he said he was sleeping and he saw a cat pursuing a rat. Huh? Yes, he was pursuing something. He was pursuing a rat. Okay, so a cat or something like that. Yeah. And he chased it in the dream. You know, there are some dreams you find yourself, you do something and you wonder, was that me? He chased the cat. And as he chased the cat, he wanted to, the thing began to change from the leg to a human being. A cat. At least, you know, my pastor is not spooky now, so you should believe the testimony. There's no way he will just fabricate this one. From the leg of the cat began to turn to a human. This is why the word of God is your safety belt. He said as he was changing and changing and changing and got here, turned to a human, he got here. When he got here and he was about to see the face, he woke up. You know that scripture. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. He said God told him, if you saw a face, you'll fight a man. And the scripture is, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood. So that you know that he's a spirit. You see why the word of God makes you safe? Because if you see a face now, ah, and let's say the face takes your auntie's face. So you are the reason. You call meeting. Mommy, this woman, she must die. She must die. I saw her. She turned from a cat to a human being. I saw auntie's face. And the auntie is looking at you. Me. A hey, me. Now, few hours later, his son was sick. There are some sicknesses that are not normal. The boy was battling for his life. I think UCH or something like that. Is there a hospital like that? In the battle? In those days. They were battling for this boy's life. So he went to the chapel of the hospital, I believe so. Knelt down the altar for nine hours. He began, he was praying, praying, praying. He said at the ninth hour, he heard the scripture. I think he said he heard it first before he saw it was in the Bible. Unto the Lord our God belongs, escapes from death. He said when that word entered, boom, the atmosphere lit up. And he said that was when he knew it was not sickness they were fighting. It was death that came as sickness. He said the moment he got that word, word he had been praying for nine hours when the word came. When he entered the theater, the battle had turned. The word. So sometimes you can pray for two weeks just to get the rema. Two weeks. And when the rema comes, boom, the situation changes. Paul was a man of rema. Quoting scriptures here and there. You know this is not the only place Paul was quoting? Uh, he, he quoted a lot from David anyway. Uh, on. Yeah. You know, David is something else. The man lived in dispensations ahead. And, uh, David, mm. why, do you call, why do you think the city of God is called the city of David? Some, why, sure, you know the flag of Israel is David's logo. Just like you have the logo of your business. That's David. Is David though. Oh, oh, you didn't know. No, now. That's the star of David. That thing is David. The man, David said some fearful things. Not a bone of his bone will be broken. On the cross, they broke the bone of the one on the left. Broke the bones of the one on the right. Left his own scriptures. He wants us to be running up and down. And leave the answer. That's what he wants us to do. That's why people can, for instance, as I'm teaching now, some of you are struggling with sleep. No, I, I can't see anybody particularly, but, you know, usually people... But the moment we switch, switch to prayer, and we will switch to prayer, and please pray where? Well. Don't say, oh, pastor is watching me now. No. Pray. The moment we switch to prayer, do you know there's more life? Talk to me. You need to understand that this is a spiritual transaction. But when it's time for the word, there's a, move, there's a sleep that comes. Now let's begin to pray. Fire your arrows. Fire. I mean, I see funny clips of people carrying cutlass and, and, and brooms in churches, hitting floors, shooting arrows, and the place is packed. The place is full. It's called prophetic action, and they are hitting the devil on the floor. One scripture tells all of them there that they are wasting their time, they should go home. Just one scripture. One. There's one that you quote, they, they will just, hey, hey, I can't be wasting my life. Like, do you know they are wasting their time? Oh, you don't want to say it. You don't know they are wasting their time? They are wasting their time. Because you ask and receive not. Because you ask and miss, so you have wasted your time asking. Satan is not on the ground. 
I stopped singing these songs years ago because of scriptures. Macha, macha. Don't get me wrong, I'm not looking for anybody, I'm just talking scriptures. Macha, macha, mo, macha. Do you know that those songs carry, not anointing, but there's a euphoria. <laughs> In those days when we were growing up, the person that used to take the late prison worship knew how to do that song. If I when they are singing that song sometimes, if somebody else is singing the song, and that song comes up, they will not give her the mic. You understand that kind of devil? When she come? I say macha 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 Everybody's jumping macha macha Sit and don't fall for You don't fall for God anywhere I don't macha 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 I just sweet rhythms <laughs> Just sweet rhythms Okay? Sweet rhythms People's If I tell you you will not believe Do you know there are people that did that macha macha Especially when that singer was singing, sing, that singer was singing it, she would go to a, uh, what do you call it, re echo. I say, macha, 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 oh, man, man, man. so people will be mad. Do you know, if I tell you this, you will not believe it. People's souls are flown away. The souls of people's shoes went. You won't believe it. <laughs> not, not your soul. The soul of their feet. Some bent, some went, because they were doing macha, 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 mm, bam, 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 bam. and when they finished, it looks like a Satan that is matching them. It is not about those things. It's about the word of God you carry and you are speaking to the situation. It's 11. Can I take my time? We have not closed. It's not yet time. It's okay. So why, where are you now? Where are you running to? Have you heard that voiceover on Facebook? Where are you running? Why are you running? Where are you running to? <laughs> When what you are getting now is the ticket for your liberty, first thing Satan will do is make you feel, my pastor said something, the first attack of the devil is to make this, the things of God look stupid. Think about that again, that's powerful. The first attack of the devil is to make the things of God look stupid. So Satan can sit down and make somebody think you're wasting your time here. That's the first line of attack. Makes you feel prayer is study, stupid. Studying the word is stupid. Raising your hand in worship is stupid. But Netflix is not stupid. Tell me the series you are watching now. You know. Tell me the scripture you are speaking about your situation now. You don't know one. What I'm telling you is practical. And you know it's true. That's why you are laughing. Okay. If you are watching a current series now, raise your hand. Don't lie. Do not lie. If you lie, there's hell for liars. If you're watching, okay, on Prime Video, I know all your, your avenues. Raise your hand. So what's the movie you're watching now? Feel free, it's all right. You raise your hand, yes, give me the name. K2? K2? Really? Is that a movie? K2. Kettle or kettle? K2. Not K2 as in K2. K2. Oh, I thought that one. K2. Oh, K2, you've, that's what you're watching too. That one is just learning. You have graduated. Are you saying? <laughs> now, I don't mean to be disrespectful. Let them quote for me verbatim the scripture there is in on their matter now. They're not the only ones, even you too. What is the scripture you are speaking to that situation now? If I, if I tell you to quote it now, you can come and quote. Once you get halfway, you are forgotten. You can't finish the scripture. Yet, it's a scripture of four lines. But that movie, you've done 16 series. Is it episodes, what do you call them? 16 episodes. There's nothing wrong with watching movies. If I, there's one I want to see. No, there's nothing wrong with that. I like, what do they call them? What movies that are done in the past or that depict the past, what are they called? Epic. Good. So I like things like the Crusaders. Um, you will not believe it. Vikings. Please, not the occultic Viking. You know Viking I'm talking about. Please, do you know the Vikings I'm talking about? You know those ones, pirates and all of that. Ha, those are the kind of things I like. So there's nothing wrong with that. But if I know that more than I know scriptures, when Satan comes, he will use movie. And be, there's one rat in the Hebrew land, I don't know if he's here, that they call Nkapi. It's a very dangerous rat. Many people are disfigured today because of that rat. Because, disfigured in the sense that the soles of their feet. It eats your leg and blows breeze. 
Oh, you don't know? You have not seen rat. They are rat. You think it's just normal way people see rat. When he chews, especially when you are sleeping. <laughs> That's how Satan is finishing some people. Ciao. You won't know. Until you wake up and you see <laughs> that you can't fulfill the scripture again that says, wherever the soul of your fish has tried to fall. Yeah, because there's no muscle. Praise God. <laughs> That's why he uses entertainment to finish people. And he blows breeze. What kind of a rat is that? But please, the way some of you are looking, have you heard of that rat before? Is it normal? Is it, as is it a normal species of rat? Yes, yes. I think it has a long mouth. Yes, uh-huh. Pastor, how do you know? We've been there. <laughs> the pastor didn't fall from heaven. Praise God. I know you don't have rats. No, not in my house. So when I was growing up, I said, no, 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 there's not one rat in my house. No. There are things I don't see two times. You know, some of you are living with, 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 with some good neighbors, man. Good neighbors. And you're okay. I saw a woman. She put a trap. I don't know if you saw it. And I'm not exaggerating. These rats were as big as this. You saw it. Not one. Not two. Not three. Not four. Ah, ah. It's not fumigation. No? It's back out. You mean what? Few what? Few? You want to fumigate that thing? That thing and a day old baby, they almost. Uh, I, I, <laughs> Jesus. I pity for that person's health. What they have been eating. No, you don't. So, Pastor, do I fumigate? No, you don't fumigate, you leave. Praise God. Please, if you have that in your house, or if you want to stay, you stay. I'm just, I'm just speaking generally. So let me, let me, let me close now. Second Corinthians four sixteen. So let's go to sixteen. You're still in the same scripture. So, according to this teaching, what is the tool we've given this morning to attack and dissolve challenges when they come in the midst of afflictions? What do you do? S- scriptures. Why should you get scriptures that suits the situation? Why? Why, 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 why should it be the word of God? Am I saying you should not speak your own words? You should. But see what Paul did. Fuse your own with scriptures. Speak from the inspired word of God. Is that okay? So go back home hmm? and get a scripture for your challenge. Please don't make it too much so you don't confuse yourself. Just get, in fact, like Enhegem would teach, two. The least should be two. Why? Out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, a matter is confirmed. Two is the number of witness. Get two scriptures that are speaking about your situation. Your prayer will now become more effective. When you, please, I'm not talking about any church. When you shout, die, 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 die. You're shouting, that, that, die, die, die. If the Holy Ghost is in your life, it begins to ask you, come. Who should die? What is dying? Because die, die, die. You can die. Instead of saying, die, 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 just look for a scripture. If it's warfare that speaks about the matter, and quote the scripture, and speak to the mountain, and then add your own. Is it, are you allowed to add your own? Oh, you see that in the Bible. Let me show you this one. So this is the next point. First, speak the scriptures. I'm going to do this in 15 minutes, I'm going to close. For which cause we faint not, but though the outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. So I want to ask a question. Um, put your eyes in this for which cause we faint not do you know some people faint in the midst of their afflictions the Bible says if you faint in the day of adversity it's because your strength watch this, watch this is little, now it says for this cause we faint not but, but though our outward man, what is the outward man? what is the outward man? some of you are just doing I want to hear you your body, is it the outward man? my afro my body, flesh. So this is my outward man. Huh? For the outward man perished, yet the inward man, the original does not put man for the inward. But we can say man because it starts with the outward man, outward, then inward should be man too. The original means the outward man and the inward. Is your, you say the outward man is your flesh. Is your flesh perishing now? Is your flesh perishing now? He said no, good. If your flesh is perishing, raise your hand. 
No, I have no answer. Answer for yourself. If somebody said his flesh is not perishing, which is possible. If your flesh is not perishing, because you must understand what it means for the outward man to perish. If your flesh is perishing, raise your hand. You see that? <laughs> you see, you said all of us, they, they, are, they are not even following you. Yourself. If your flesh is perishing, raise your hand. Why? Because I asked, I asked, I asked again. Okay, if you took a bath this morning, rave. That's because your flesh is perishing. If you washed your teeth, and I hope you did. <laughs> that's because the outward man is perishing. If you didn't take a bath, your outward man is renewed. <laughs> you are your own. But please take a bath when you're coming here. Very, very important. Praise God. So the outward man perished. Yet, the inward man is renewed. How? It's day by day schedule. It's day by day program. Do we have the program through which or upon which the outward man perishes? Look at that again. The outward man perishes. How? Is it day by day? Is it second by second? Is there a schedule? Is there a time frame? Look at it in the Bible. Is it there? The outward man perishes. How? Is there a time schedule? Do you know how? Do you know? Okay, for instance, do you know if your body is decaying? A second or every minute or in four hours in a four hours interval you understand what i mean by that do you know that can you tell how your outward man is perishing you can't but the bible tells us that the inward man now you must understand why the inward man is important for your battles in life because it is the spirit of a man the inward man that will sustain him in his infirmities if your inward man is weak challenges will make you faint that's why it says, for this cause we faint not. But have you ever went, gone through some things that people went through, and when they heard what you went through, they wonder how you survived? I was, this is one of my mentors, Bishop David Ward Mills. He said one of his associate pastors left the church, broke the church, I think, and began to say rubbish about him. So as a good father, he took one of, the, one of his elder bishops, um, associate bishops, and went to meet the man, thinking that when the man sees Bishop David Ward Mills, so when he entered the house, the pastor looked at him and said, what are you doing here? What are you doing in my house? If I cut you my house again, I'm going, to, I'm, go, I'm going to arrest you. Out of my house, you foolish people. Out! 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 He began to, he now went to, the bishop now went to bring the man that led him to Christ. When he came with the man that led him to Christ, the man looked at both bishop and the man that led him to Christ and said, what are you doing here? Get out of my house. I don't want to see you here. Get me out. And began to abuse him. Somebody now asked him later, how did you feel? How did you survive that level of insult? The truth of the matter is that it was when somebody asked me and I thought about it. It's true. How did I survive? There are some things you go through. Let me tell you why you went through them. Your inward man was renewed. He was strong. Let me say this. The inward man is renewed how? Day by day. That means, okay, another question I want to ask. Is the perishing of the body automatic? Is the perishing of the body automatic? Yes. Automatic. You know, there's no way you can stay four days and not need a bath. Why do you keep silent? Is that correct? Can you stay four days and not need a bath? Is there an equipment you can stay up under and not need a bath? Because there are lots of innovations. Some people are laughing very... If you know, tell me now. Let, let me know. Is there an equipment, um, Pascal? No, let me know. She's just joking. <laughs> Praise God. Don't worry. You want to hear what she's saying? No, you're not going to hear it. Praise God. What the message? Amen. <laughs> but even the, though you did it, you needed a bath. You just, for some good reasons, just didn't decide <laughs> to have the bath. <laughs> is the renewing of your inward man automatic as the perishing of the outward man is automatic? Wow. Good student. So what's the schedule of the renewal? Paul, watch this. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you. I hear this one. Paul said, sufficient for the... So it's day by day evil and trouble. And the inward man is renewed. Let's say that again. Sufficient for the day. And the inward man is renewed. That means there are daily practices you must be observing 
to fight daily battles, to withstand daily problems. It must be renewed. So some people have not renewed their inward man for two weeks. So a little challenge comes and it wipes them out. So let's take some examples of renew your inward man. How do you renew your inward man daily? So what are the daily practices that a Christian should have to renew his inward man? And you don't need to have trouble to practice. No. No. You don't need to have trouble. Just practice. So what are the daily practices you should have as a Christian every day to build the inward man to stand outward challenges? Number one. Have a good study life. I always say this and I'm, I'm sure I sound like a, like a broken record now. Have a study Bible. Have a study Bible. Pascal, let me see that Bible. Is that Bible good? This is new. Good. Any difference? Do you study this at home? Is there any difference? Have you, what were you studying with before? Good. I, because I'm always known to be a software person. Be sincere with me. Since you started doing this, was there any difference? Honestly, any difference? Honestly, go ahead. Good. What have you, how long have you been using your phone? Good. How long have you been using this? Oh, no, that one's still tender. It's still tender, but this is where I'm going to. Do you spend, be sincere with me, what's your average on this every day? On this? You understand now, you understand what I'm saying? Uh -uh. You don't get the answer? Two minutes. Can you finish meat pie in two minutes? Even two minutes noodles takes more than two minutes to make. <laughs> Have you noticed that that thing is not two minutes? No, it's not two minutes. Pastor, is it gas you're using? It's gas. She's sincere. I like her because she says the truth. Two minutes. Can you change? Can anything happen? We beholding as in a glass the word of the Lord. So, do you use mirrors at home? Yes. Do you spend two minutes making up? No, the answer is no. The answer is no. What's the least time a woman spends on the mirror? He <laughs> 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 just allowed to bad his wife. <laughs> Praise God. Yes, that's his answer from his two hours. Praise God. So he's two hours. Amen. Jesus is Lord. Amen. <laughs> I wish I leave you and go where I'm going. He will come by himself. I don't have that power. Except you wake up by 2 a.m. He <laughs> got that time. <laughs> uh, no, you have to wake up early. Now, if Mrs. Adetunji spends, uh, of course, I don't know how long she spends on the board. If she spends two hours on this every day, will he show? Yes, sir. It will show. So every woman here, at least, don't, I'm not saying you should not make up, at least for the number of times you make up, equate it with your study life. If you make up one hour, start studying one hour, I just gave you a good exercise to gym with. These are dumbbells in the spirit. There was a time a mentor of mine said, put us on a program, no scripture, no breakfast, no scripture, no lunch, no scripture, no dinner, it worked. Ah, I'm, I'm telling you daily practices and exercises. Don't just sit down and expect that your inner woman will be renewed by laying on of hands. No, 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 no. It must be by daily practices. So imagine somebody sits down now and goes home and begins to do no scripture, no breakfast. Try it. In fact, somebody should try it. No scripture, no breakfast, which means as you get very hungry, you know, it will drive you to go and read the Bible. First, you will start in the flesh, and that's fine. Which means you will be going to Bible study because of hunger. Because you put yourself under a strict uh, structure. So what time do you have your breakfast? Give me an example. I want to close in five minutes. Give me an example. Don't lie. You do 12. Huh? Doctor. Much later. Good. There's one I started doing. but um, um, I'm not saying you should copy me. It's, um, amen. You know, there are too many lectures on IG on health. You have to be careful which one to take. Have you seen them? There are too many. Everybody is telling you how to eat. This is connecting to the inward man, you know? Because one of the things that will also keep you alive to face your challenges is to be alive in the flesh. Amen? You are better believe it or you have to be alive. You have to eat right. It's part of warfare. Eat right. Eat right. So I discovered that... Um, they said, 
from 7 or 10 p.m. till the morning, 11 a.m. the next morning, your system is supposed to be relaxing. But well, some of us pump food. Ha! When I did that thing, Lemende Palapala Paskatana. Some of you have noticed something. You know, my native wares used to be. Have you noticed that? Oh, you people notice? Ah, yeah. Sorry, it's just my, my build and my measurement. Suit covers a lot of things. You know what happened? Have you, have you seen my native wares recently? Is that thing? Uh, it got so serious that sometimes, for instance, I think yesterday or day before yesterday, it is four, five, six throughout the day. I overdid it so that there can be energy for the work. Are you hearing what I'm saying? In the same vein, you need some daily practices to keep you fit. Number one, the study of the Word of God. Write it down, please. The study of the Word of God. I didn't say reading the Word of God as a newspaper. Study. Well, do both. Read, study. Read, study. Read, study. Read, study. Take your Bible. I like good Bible, so I don't seize it. Praise God. Number two. <laughs> I don't know if you like this one. Holy Ghost, how do I put the order? Okay. Praying in the Holy Ghost. Why? Beloved. Building. 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 There's a prayer that is fellowship. There's a prayer that is building. Building yourself upon your most holy faith. Praying in the Holy Ghost. Prayer life. Whether you understand by the Holy Ghost. But please. Um, Paul said it. And Ken Hagin said it. There's, there's, there's a huge advantage when you pray in the Holy Ghost. Huge advantage. If you are confused, just start praying in the Holy Ghost for weeks. There will be clarity. Number next, I don't know if you like this one, but I give it to you for free as a secret. Listening to messages. Uh, listening to messages. My wife, let me have your phone. I know you're writing with it. Good. How many gig is this phone? 128 gig. If I take your phone now, will I see a message inside? Raise your hand if I'll see a message. For those of you who didn't raise your hand, this is not to shame you. This is for you to go and load messages on your phone fast. Uh, Pastor, but I hear it with my laptop. No, there's something about your phone. There's something about having your uh, messages on your phone that is easily accessible. For instance, when you're in traffic and all of that. Okay? Load your device with phone. But I hope I won't see a sake. Is it a sake? Or a sake? What, what, how do you call it? A sake. If you have a sake on your phone, raise your hand. You won't raise your hand. You have a sake. Let's go. Oh, no, no, no. Okay, it's online. No, that's the one you do, but you store for me. No, oh, thank you for bringing that from me. You have messages you should store. You have messages you should store. Let me tell you how to do it. Big, I understand you listen to a lot of messages and one device can carry all of them. There are messages you should be storing per time listening to because the Holy Ghost is saying, do this. When you are done, you reload. One of my friends, that's what he does. He does YouTube playlists. There's a way they do it. He just arranges it. So the Holy Ghost will say, for this season, I want you to listen on this topic. So that's what he listens. So it must be saved. You can't just be looking for it every time on YouTube. There must, I'm teaching you what works. So. Your generation does not have schedule. That's why you're weak. You don't have schedule. You people don't like schedule. You just like whenever I find it. No, no, no. It must be scheduled somewhere for easy access. When you are done with that one, the Holy Ghost will now say, now go for healing. Then you can now, um, how do you do it? Is it delete the playlist? And get another one. But you must have things stored. Bishop Daki, what means was going through a problem and, and God said, he was asking God, what do I do? God said, I won't tell you. Is in one of your libraries. He said, Ken Hagen tapes. He said, Lord, I have too many boxes of them in the days of cassettes. He said, all you need to do, get people, let them start searching the box, the box on healing. Go there. You see healing box. Start eating all of them. If you didn't have it stored, are you hearing what I'm saying? You are a blessed generation. 
you will sit down like this and you'll be listening to John G. Lake of 1940s on YouTube. You are a blessed generation. In those days, we buy tapes. Careful Dollar Ministries will say, before it will arrive, it will arrive in his magazine. What changes magazine? When you get it like this, one day, one of my friends, he gave me one. One broke. Oh, God. When your tape breaks in those days. Or the thing cuts. You know, when you are listening to it, it will cut. You know? You know? This, uh, what I'm saying looks crazy. This just, you know what I'm saying now? There's no cassette I can't fix. If you doubt me, bring tomorrow, next week. I'll fix it. To save our battery, there's a way we rewind with pen. Hmm. And somehow you know the exact spot where it says something. You know that, are you, oh, are you getting what I'm saying? That part that is bigger, one part is small, you just know. And when you play it inside, that's when Ken Higgins is saying, praise God, he's giving you exact testimony that he was giving. That's what he wanted to hear. But the Bible says, those who by reason of use have their senses exercised. You, you rewind. You save the battery, you listen again. But now, I discovered something. When things are really cheap, people don't value it. I really discovered that in even ministry, even access, if it's cheap, people don't value it. It's one of the biggest problems that many genuine ministers have. So some of them have to start making themselves scarce by force. People don't value things you can access. No. I called one, one of my friends called me, we were talking about, he was having some challenges in ministry. I spoke out of my spirit. I said, church members respect the mysterious. Average church members, they, they respect the mysterious. If there's no mystery, around you they don't value it but it's a temptation because satan can make you because of them move into pride now your generation has a lot of those teachings to listen to it is a problem in fact they'll be telling you please like share click for where do you know kenny higgin messages one day i saw i'll mention his name pastor king silicone he i just went to we're talking and i saw kenny higgin healing Many teachings like that. Ah, hey, you know what it means to see kind of hanging tape in those days? I said, Emoji, ah, I embarrassed myself that day. Where, where did you get it from? He laughed. I bought it. I will never forget that day, brother. <laughs> if that don't know me, that with money you can buy it. You, know you can order for it because it was a miracle. That's what I mean. Uh, uh, from US. How did you get it? I bought it. Send for it. Pray, it will come. I felt, I felt stupid anyway, but praise God. We have learned now. I can buy it. And we don't share. Because those days, if you give, we learn by experience. If you share, that's all. But do you know that those messages today, as I speak to you now, they're on YouTube. In fact, if you want to watch Ken Higgins burial service, I have watched it more than 72 times, if not 100. I just like watching it. I can tell you every song they sang. Thank you for giving to the Lord. I'm a life that's been changed. I watch Higgins memorial service. It's free on YouTube. Those days, who born you? Where will you see it? Now you have it. Do you use it? There's no pastor you are looking for today. Except he doesn't have an online ministry. Even the ones that don't have online ministry, they are carrying their materials now and they are putting online. My pastor said something that is true. He said, you see a sound Bible teacher, a message has been uploaded for 16 years. It has 215 views. My pastor said it, 215 views. That is truth there. That is life changing there. But you see a Asake, see? Asake, concert of yesterday, millions of views. You know, you know how some of you are looking at me like, hey, Pastor, but that is the word. It will shock you that these born again Christians are listening to it. Did you hear what I said? It's not Muslims. I'm not saying Muslims are not there. Christians are listening to it. But Christians are not listening to messages. I'm going too far. Can I is too far? Do you listen to the message of this church? You do. A few people do. Do you listen? Do you know after service? You know, I've told you whether I like it or not. You see, I have a pastor. After a message, I go to church. Oh. Once I go home, my, my pastor will be teaching. I'll miss it halfway. After they do it, they rebroadcast it for people like us. So I must attend service as you see me today. And listen to my pastor feed me as I fed you. That's how people grow. So listen to messages. How many do you have? Now I want to give it to you. What next? Give me from your experience. 
What next? Fasting. Is that a good daily exercise? Um, but don't die. You know what I'm saying? Fast. I'm not saying you should not fast daily, but if the Lord leads you daily, you can fast. Or you can live a fasted life like Ed Hagen did. You skip a meal. Maybe you fast your lunch, or you fast your dinner, or you fast your... I think the easiest one to do is to fast your breakfast. Fast. So, do that. Yeah. <laughs> Praise God. What next? Help me so we can close. What the, uh, before I use the anointing to take your phone. What next? Prayer. Okay. What next? Somebody speak from your experience. Daily practices to renew the renewed road man. You said morning devotion. Okay. That's also powerful. Having a corporate place apart from your personal time of fellowship under a corporate anointing. What, what do you say again? Oh, that's powerful. Somebody needs to write down that. You must have a memory verse you are memorizing and confessing every day. You see, when challenges come, these are the stuff they meet. They can't take you down because you are loaded. But when you are empty, that's when you start saying, have you heard there's a challenge that many pastors go through? I'll close in 10. There's a challenge that many pastors go through. The challenge of, and I say this respectfully, and I know it's a sensitive matter, where people have challenges and they say their pastor is not anointed. Have you heard that or seen that before? Yeah. Pastoring is so... You know, my mother... Of course, she knows I'm called. But she didn't want me to do... to pioneer a work. You know why? You know when you know something but you're trying to hide away from the thing? Because of the sufferings of ministry. Just listen to this. She didn't want me to suffer. If you have children, you should understand the feeling. Because they suffer the ministry. And one of the sufferings in ministry is this. If you are prospering, you break through. Everybody will be thanking God. If four people in a row are looking for children and they have not had it, they say the pastor is not anointed. Have you noticed that? Yeah. If somebody loses something, they say his pastor is not anointed. But according to the parable of the sower, sure you know is 98% not the pastor. It's the ground. So years ago, God freed me from that. That nobody can you can't catch me with that, you know. You can't catch me with that. That ah, um, this one is no, 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 no. I will also show you seven people in the church that are getting testimonies. So you should be asking yourself, why are you not getting it? People use that to arm twist pastors. Pastors begin to do what they begin. They begin to play God. No, I'm not God. I'm a man of God. I bring forth His word. Is what you do with the word that matters. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes, sir. So pastors come under that thing because people don't, they don't, they don't practice the word of God. They don't do it. And they now carry, they now leave their responsibility and to say that the pastor is not anointed. What is your yardstick of the anointing? What's your yardstick of the anointing? Let me tell you one way to know a man that is anointed. Paul said you are proofs of my apostleship. Okay, so you look in the congregation first the fruits of his life, righteousness. No, people don't even want to see that one now. His car, his character, righteousness, integrity, fruits of righteousness. Next thing you see is that you must see testimonies of his apostleship. I'm going to explain something. I didn't, see, I didn't know I would do this. Uh, two of my um, children in the faith came to me yesterday. I don't like announcing things like this, and they brought a seed to me. I blessed them, laid hands on them, went home. I hope I wish I brought it. It's not here. They put a note. If I knew I was going to do this, my mother brought it. I didn't plan this. And they said, they are here now. They said, um, we are, I may not get the exact words, but we are proofs of the grace of God upon your life. Very strong words. They put the money and the envelope and the note inside the envelope. So it was when I got home. So what they were saying is that they can tell that their change of levels is directly proportional to the grace of God upon man. They wrote it, not that I told them to say it. Not two words. You almost feel the paper. So I'm just saying it in, I'm being concise. Now, if somebody like that is testifying, shouldn't everybody testify? So if you are not testifying, something is wrong. 
So that is the proof to me. I can't sit down now. I, I've gone past the level to ask myself, are you called? Ah, no, no, no. The, 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 the proofs of my calling is too much. Too much. Even enemies know. They say it in hiding. So when it's not working for you, check your practices. Check your heart. Check if you're working the word of God. Don't come and be saying pastor is not anointed. It is a pastor that just came yesterday that that one will break his heart. Not Agbalagbas like us. You know what I mean by Agbalagba? What's Agbalagba? Old man. Old man. I'm an old man in this thing now. I have a young face, but I'm old. She goes, yeah, you laughed. Okay, you're not the one that laughed. Praise God. Did you get that? I don't know where that came from, but get that. I didn't come here to announce seed. But in fact, what, what touched me was the note much more than the seed. And the seed was good seed. Praise God. It's good seed. Uh, may God give you people that will remember your labor. Uh, it's very important. There are some that will just pass. In fact, the way they will pose so that people don't know that it's your grace that worked on them. But even if you don't say it, I know is the grace upon my life that worked for. I know. You can hide for people, but I know. Oh, by the way, hey. All right. So another person walked into my office this morning and brought a seed. <laughs> it's seed time, amen. amen. And God's going to change that person's story too. Because that person is here under the sound of my voice. God's going to change your story. In Jesus' name. Uh, and no, no, pastor is using time to tell people to bring seed. Since you entered this church, have you heard me do that? I don't have time. No. I didn't tell anybody to bring seed. They brought it. Keep your seed. My pastor said something two weeks ago. I don't know what happened. Maybe I should ask. He said, stop paying tight until you go and have an encounter with God. Don't come here and be saying you are paying tight. Something's not happening. Stop it until you become absolutely sure. I know what he's saying. Because some people think that this they are giving thing is bribing God. So go and get personal revelation before you start doing that. I'm not saying you should stop in that. Do you get what I'm saying? Uh, now, the reason why I said that is to let you know that. If a pastor can say that, it's to let you know that it is not your titan offering. Now somebody asked me a question. Pastor, uh, if, you are, if, you are not, if you are not shopping shush money, if you are not shopping shush money, tell us. How do they send your shoes and go to school? How do they wear clothes? Even when Adam was outside the will of God, God covered his nakedness. Adam, Adam, God so live. Now talking of man, a man in his will, doing his assignment. He will send the ravenous birds from the east. What I just told you, if I didn't tell you, you wouldn't know. You see somebody bless me yesterday, if I didn't tell you, you didn't know, you wouldn't know. That's how God honors us. So she have answered your question. I have answered your question. Your hidden question. Your heart, for instance. <laughs> Uh, go back to my scripture, I'll close. I promise. I have to finish this. Just two scriptures, I will close. Go back to my scripture, 2 Corinthians 14. I hope you've sent your prayer point. This is just a few minutes past 11, so we are right on time. So I want us to read together, two, three, go, everybody. For which cause we what? But though our outward man perish, keep reading with me, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. Next verse. Now watch this, watch this. For our light affliction. Why is he calling light affliction? Light. Why is it light? Why do you think it's light? Do you know there are things that will make it light and there are things that if you don't do it, you make it heavy? Oh God. Watch this. How, what will make it light? The daily practices. Once your inward man is renewed day by day, the challenges that come, that sink others, will be light on you. That's powerful. You need to note that. Paul is calling it light, light affliction, which is but for a moment, walk it for us a far more exceeding weight of glory. Next verse. Watch this. Watch this. Next verse. While we look. So I want to explain something in English language. Um, how many of you have been driving before? If you are a man here, you were driving before, and a lady passed, and you looked at the lady. Let me see your hand. He raised his hand. Praise God. Your wife is not here. It's good. That's all right. That's all right. That was before. I hear what I'm saying. It's before now. Sure? Good. So, <laughs> I don't know why people are laughing. It's street food. All of you are laughing. You know you've done worse. In fact, some of you drove into a bush, but you won't say anything. <laughs> so, you are driving, and you just see her, and you are looking. You know the funny thing? Why don't you pause? 
this is where I feel your villagers have come. You will now be driving. And you are looking. That's where the problem is. <laughs> so Paul says, whilst this affliction is on, what we are looking at, while we look, upon the light affliction, what you look on, what you gaze at, determines how you come out. When Peter was walking towards Jesus, when Jesus called him, what was he looking at? When he took his eyes off Jesus and looked at the wind, what happened? So when you are going through challenges, what you look at, what you gaze on is very important. Why we look at the things which are not seen. But the things which are, why we look at the things which are seen, I beg your pardon, why we look not at the things which are seen, but the things which are not seen. Now, I want to ask you a question. Um, I've closed. I began. What's, your, what's, your, what's one of your greatest needs now? You need a new accommodation. Please, she's not homeless. You're trusting God for a better accommodation. Okay? Okay. You are looking for a good accommodation. Have you seen it? You've not seen it. So it's not seen. So the Bible says, while you look at the things, you look not at the things which are seen. So what is that thing that is seen in your life now that you shouldn't see in this context? The absence of the house. Hmm? So you're not supposed to focus on it. So what should you be seeing? Hmm? So are you looking at houses physically? That helps your mind. You're looking at houses, duplexes, beautiful places. Now, this principle works. What are you looking at? Do you look at the fact that you, are not, you have not conceived your child yet? Or do you see the fact that your children surround your table? Abraham considered not the deadness of Sarah's womb, which means when Sarah was saying, not if you walk here, he wasn't seeing it. So what you look at is very, very important. Single people, listen to me. See yourself married. Not spiritual husband. Not spiritual wife. I had to say that so that, because I want to say, I want to say, make this statement. I don't want you to misunderstand it. See yourself married in the spirit. Not spiritual husband. You, you understand what I mean by married in the spirit? See yourself married. And I don't know if I should say behave married. Can I say behave married? Behave married, but not 100%. Huh? Okay, let me tell you one of the ways the sisters can behave married. When you come out, and you, you, praise God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. You understand what I'm saying? And you wear half court. You know what half court is? You were laughing before. Help me. Help me. You know half court. And you give half out. Hmm? There's a way a sister will walk, you will know that no man has purchased that material. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? So look like, behave, dress as a married woman. Is that okay? Uh -huh. Number two, talk like a married woman. There's a way singles talk. Oh God, I don't enter problem. Praise God. I've entered on that one now. Um, not all singles. Are you hearing what I'm saying? <laughs> but there's a way married people talk. They talk with responsibility. Mm? For instance, if you meet a young man and he takes you out, oh, I'm not giving you this testimony. So there was a lady I was dating. I took her to Mr. Biggs many years ago. Many, very, very, very many years ago. Somebody say very many years ago. Very many years ago. Praise God. So I took her to Mr. Biggs. And um, very touche girl and all of that. So God has some things because when you take a lady out, you must have money to buy some things. That's what I believe. Don't go there and be saying 50-50. I don't know where that came from. So when she finished, we're heading out. Not, not too far from here anyways. So she walked back, said, sorry, can I get some things for her? When I had to get some things for her, I was like, so this thing I've been hearing happens. <laughs> <laughs> you know I've been hearing it. <laughs> there was no idea that time I've been hearing it. What do you expect I would do? He will go back. Are you hear what I'm saying? Are you hear what I'm saying? You will not want to give a wrong impression of falling your heart. Praise God. So I went back. I will not forget. She began to pick donuts. She said, would pastries do? I was even happier. I said, oh, praise God, it's pastries. She began to pick pastries like it sounds. Pastries. She picked scotch egg, this thing. So guess who she was picking it for? Her siblings at home. If I remember. Yes, her siblings. She was just picking and picking and picking. As she was speaking, it was like a dagger in my heart. I hear what I'm saying. It was... <laughs> <laughs> 
I say, God, three more strikes and I'm dead. I'm dead. Hey! I began. As we, I will never forget that glass, transparent glass. As we walked through that glass, I took a vow, like Jethro. I vowed. <laughs> I'm sorry. I vowed. And that was it. I ran. <laughs> oh, I ran. You know, have you run so much that someone missed you five years ago? So what happened? Why did you run? Said, no, no, it's all right. <laughs> Nothing much. <laughs> So behave like a married woman. A married, somebody who wants to marry, who knows that. You know, that's a litmus test for men. Are you getting what I'm saying? So you think as a married woman when you're on a date like that. Don't go and be taken for your client. This man knows that you're going to kill him with family bills. So you understand what I mean by behave like a married woman somehow. Uh-huh. Praise God. Sure, you get that one. Uh-huh. I've helped some men here. Sure. Praise God. You are dating, or you are about dating. They have not even dated. You are about dating. You are just clearing the grass, and some, somebody is already taking bills, taking scotch eggs and things like that for family. You are going to pay school fees till you are ninety-two. <laughs> <laughs> you think pastors reign by anointing alone? Is this not functioning wisdom? This wisdom. So I ran away from my life. I knew that this one was not marriage material. She was going to kill me with aunties, health bills, and all of that. And there was also a young man, let me just go through this, a young man, came out first class, Uniben, was working with Zenibank in our former church. Bright guy, computer science, Uniben. Zenibank, great guy. So he just saw one lady that was not even a graduate, and I, I don't do that. I mean, one of my sons is marrying somebody, wants to marry somebody that is, you know, she has not even gotten a BSc yet, and all of that, and I'm, I'm, I'm okay with that. My own is that, know where you are, have your plan, work together, you can make it. I don't do class, I don't. So this guy, Saw one lady inquire. I'll never forget her name. But I won't mention the name. And just took a liking to her. I said I was going to marry her. And, this guy, and it was like a breakthrough. It wasn't up to two months. Mommy needed surgery. The sister needed, sister, younger sister needed to go to school. Ah. He ran on the fifth month. You know, the Bible says in the, in the year that King Uzziah died. In the year, <laughs> I, saw, I saw the Lord. I see what he saw. He was dated, high and lifted, <laughs> and his train through the temple. He ran, and from what I know now, that was one of the best decisions he ever made. Oh yes, because I look at the two of them. That that would have been a dangerous mistake over his destiny. So, ladies, behave. You understand what I mean by behave like you're married to, eh? Do you understand what I mean? I behave like you're married. To do encourage me. You do. Praise God. Amen. Um, should I give the men's own so I don't sound like a chauvinist? Yeah? So how should the men, I want the congregation to answer me, how should the men behave? L- not look at the things that are seen, but things that are not seen and behave like they are married. Amen. Start taking responsibilities. Right? Don't refuse your sister. When your sister calls you for school fees, don't put the phone on airplane mode. No. That's one of the ways to build your biceps in the school of responsibility. I'll tell you for free. Check how a man treats his mother and his sisters. you know how he'll treat you. Argue all you want. Get married, you see what I'm saying. If you want to know a good man, check the way he checks, takes care of his sisters. Now, I'm speaking with pain in my heart. Because I got a recent bill for my sister that is graduating tomorrow. She's, she called my mom. She does, she's a nice girl. She doesn't like disturbing me. She knows I have a lot to do with. She called my mom when she gave the list. You know, they always send the list. You've seen somebody graduating now. There's a list. You didn't send list? list. <laughs> and she gave me the list. She gave first my mom, hoping that my mom would talk. My mom said, oh, I'll call your brother. She said, call your brother. I just sent him the list. And when I saw the list, I say, but I don't have to rehearse. I'm married already. Are you hear what I'm saying? <laughs> but we have to do it. Are you hear what I'm saying? Not because we have it, but we think as responsible men, and we don't run away from responsibilities. Is that okay? Please stand to your feet. I don't know why I said that about men and women. So maybe the relationship conference has started. So take that one as your 
your appetizer. Give him praise and give him glory. So it's now to do practical class. And we're not going to waste time to do this. I want to show you something. Media, help me with scriptures, please. Uh, Psalm 113 verse 8 Media put it up We're going to pray this prayer first Have you received the prayer point? So what will happen is that We'll put them up quickly You have to be fast And then all of you will point Please, if you are the one that sent it Don't point That's how to give it to the right person Do you understand that? Do you understand what I said? Uh -uh. Do you understand? Oh, you don't understand what I said? Okay, we are going to be taking people's prayer points. They will put it on the screen. I want you to be pointing the one you take, one by one. So you just raise your hand, say, me, sir, point. But make, if it's your own prayer, keep your hand down. Do you understand that? Uh. Come again. No, I will regulate it. I will regulate that. That's why I'm here. I'm the conductor, praise God, of this service under the Holy Ghost. So we're, um, we're going to pray this prayer first. Give me verse 7. Pray this in five minutes. We'll be here in 10, out of here in 10 or 15 minutes. 7. So he raised the poor out of the dust and lifted the needy out of the dunghill. Next verse. That he may set him with princes, even with the princes of the people. Now God said to me that people's seats will change. So this is the first prayer point we're going to pray. That your seat, your seat in life, where you sit will change. I'm not talking about the physical seat. No longer will you sit amongst the people who are called destitute, failures, people who never get there or never make it. Your change or your seat is changing this morning. You begin to sit with the princes. Lift your voice and begin to talk to the Lord. Take five minutes and pray this prayer. It's a word that the Lord gave me for this house. Our seats are changing. And now some of you, it will be physical. You, you will be promoted. Where you used to sit at work will not, where you, will not be where you'll be sitting in a couple of few, in a couple of months or a few weeks from now. You will change seats. You will change seats. Some of you, and that seat is going higher. It's going higher. It's not a lower seat. It's a higher seat. Your seat is changing. Your seat in your family changes. Your seat in your ministry changes. Your seat in your destiny changes. Your seat in your career changes. Raise your voice and declare that your seat is changing. The Bible says it takes the poor from the market that he may sit him or set him with princes. You are sitting among princes. Princes in your field. Princes in your field. Salman, give, him, give me volume on, the, on this one. Your seat is changing. Your seat is changing. Your seat is changing. Open your voice and speak to the Lord. Your seat in your career, it is changing. It is changing. In the name of Jesus, your seat is changing. In every field, they are princes. In every field, they are princes. In every field, they are princes. You will begin to sit amongst the prince. You will begin to sit amongst the princes. Who is praying? Who is talking to the Lord? You don't need music to pray. You just need a heart and a cry to pray. Your seat will change. The word of the Lord came to me in this scripture. Now begin to pray the word of the Lord. Your seat will change. Your seat has changed. Your seat begins to change. Take two more minutes and pray that prayer that your seat in life is changing. Your seat in your career is changing. Your seat in your destiny is changing. Your seat in marriage is changing. Your seat financially is changing. Somebody's seat is changing. Somebody's seat is changing. Let's give me a little volume here. Somebody's seat is changing. Somebody's seat is changing. Your seat is changing. He's setting you amongst princes. That means people will look at you. You know when they came for the body of Jesus, they couldn't find him there anymore. He said he's no longer here. He's risen as he said. 
So raise your voice and declare that your seat is changing. Your seat as a married person is changing. God is changing your seat. God is changing where you stand amongst people. God is changing your seat in your industry. God is set, set, changing your seat in, the, in your career field. He's changing your seat. He's changing your level. He's changing the people you walk with. He's changing your association. He's changing your seat in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, your seat is changing. Ato kavande keskibriano kapo kaskotia. Zide baka sande bali avrana gas katanas. E bali ke tako sapanda bakiano ka. Seats are changing. What city? Open your mouth and pray. The word has been taught. Now it's time to practice truth. This is the word of God. Why don't you begin to speak the word of God in prayer over your situation? Your seat is changing. If for your seat to change, you need to know where you are now. Recognize where you are now. Your seat is changing. In your career, is changing. Where you walk is changing. Your seat is changing. Your seat is changing. We are praying the word of God, not emotional prayers. The Bible says that he may set him with princes. Even with the princes of his people. This means that it is where you belong to. But, this, but that your level where you belong to begins to change. Your seat is changing. No longer will you be called one of these people. You will stand out. You will stand out. You will stand out. You will stand out. Oh, in IT, you will stand out. Your seat is changing. Your seat is changing. In your business, your seat is changing. In your calling, your seat is changing. Take one more minute and pray this prayer from the depth of your heart. Some of you will change seats physically. Notice that. It will start physically. There will be a promotion. But beyond that, in your spiritual life, in the spirit, your seat is changing. Ah, in your family, you are the person that always comes last in things. You come last in achievement. You come last in, in, in great things. But in the name of Jesus, your seat is changing. Your seat is changing. Your seat is changing. Your seat is changing. You are sitting amongst princes. You are sitting amongst princes. Raise your voice and pray. This is the only prayer point we are praying this morning. As a family, so raise your voice and pray that your seat is changing. Rabba Somebody is praying themselves into a new level. Somebody is praying themselves into a new sitting capacity. Oh, I prophesy that that seat, you will fit on that seat. You will fit sitting on that seat. The seat fits you. In the name of Jesus, you will have whatever you say. Take your seat. Take your seat. It's God who is putting you there. It is not man who is putting you there. It is God who is putting you there. Your seat is changing. He takes your seat and puts you among princes. Puts you among princes. Open your mouth and pray this prayer. Don't keep quiet. Don't think we are passing time here. Yeah. This is your moment of change. It is what you say that you see. It is what you say that you'll have. Your seat is changing. Your seat is changing. Your seat is changing. Your seat is changing. Akata pakata nabakata. Abakata pakata nabakata. Ah, who told you you are barren? Your seat is changing. You are sitting among mothers who are giving breast to their children. Who, they, who are giving so who are who are feeding their kids and breastfeeding their kids. You will sit among the pregnant women. You sit among the women who have been delivered of their children. Who told you you are going to be fatherless? You are going to sit among the fathers. You are sitting amongst the fathers. You are sitting amongst the fathers. You are sitting among those in your field as consultants. Akas in a short while, God will change your seat. By competence and favor, in a short while, God will change your seat. In a short while, God is changing the seats of people in the world city. God is changing your seat where you walk. He's changing your seat where you live. Abaka Satanama, lift your voice and pray. 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 It's the word of God we are praying. It's the word of God we are praying. It's the word of God we are praying. Kada balikes kata balakata na bahasusi. Ziva taba safari na bahasusi feneke sisi. Zite pakose vedi bahasa zabana hakasiya. Sete vaka mahata kasana. God is changing the seat of people. Ah, your seat will change. 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 God has space for you. God has a space for you. Your seat is changing. 
Your seat is changing. It's changing. It's changing. You will no longer be where you were before this service. I repeat that again. You will no longer be, we, be where you were at the beginning of this service before you came to this service. Your seat has changed. The seat of your spouse has changed. The seat of your husband has changed. The seat of your wife has changed. The seat of your marital destiny has changed. Everybody under the spirit of confusion. You are living here not confused because your seat has changed. Your seat has changed. Your seat has changed. It's not about to change. It has changed. In Jesus' precious name we have prayed. No, let your amen be believing. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Father, I thank you because the seats of your people have changed. Lord, let the grounds be open for testimonies. On ground testimonies. Let there be promotions, physical promotion and physical changes of seat or change of seat in the workplace. Let people change their business seats in the name of Jesus. Oh, you were one of the startups in your business, but God is going to change your seat. You will be, the next time they call you, you will be amongst the people who are sitting as thri owners of thriving businesses. Owners of working businesses in the name of Jesus. Somebody here, as you are about to start your business, and as you are about to float that idea, you will start with the push of grace. I'm telling you, you will come from the back to the front. I said you will come from the back to the front in the name of Jesus. And I hear this word for you. As the hand of God came upon Elijah and he had run Ahab's chariot. I don't know, but I sense a stirring in my spirit. For somebody who is about to begin something, you've planned it for so long. There's an idea. There's a service you want to render. The hand of God will come upon you. You will outrun those in your field without Christ. I'm telling you, you will outrun those in your field without a covenant. In the name of Jesus, so shall it be. In Jesus' precious name. Give him praise. Give him praise. Media, how many do we have? Let's do this in 10 minutes. How many do we have? Can you sum it up? 21. Mm. All right. So give me the first one. Please note it. If you are, the, are you with your pen and paper? How are you going to note them? Okay. Who wants to take a picture of it? So you should take a picture of it. If you have a smartphone, please. Okay. And um, if you don't have a snap, do, that would be easy. If you don't have a smartphone, see the media. Um, Mr. Jesu Bellumi, he would, um, I would note it, he would note it, and then send it to you. Is this one prayer point? Yes, sir. Manifestation of what myself and my husband are trusting God for as individuals and as a family. Manifestation of my elder sister's and her husband's job. Manifestation of my younger sister's pregnancy. Trusting God for godly relationships and next level for my younger brother. This prayer is enough for a week. Okay, it's enough for a week. So who's taking this? One. So Pascal is taking this. Have you taken it? Yes, you should be careful. You pass the camera. All right. Please, next time you just snap it so you can zoom in. What's the plan? Okay, so, okay, let's listen to them. We get numbers. So one, you are number one. Good. So let's go to number two. Note them so you don't make a mistake. Number two. Manifestation of my training and promotion in my place of work. This is also manifestation. Is it the same person? Okay. Manifestation of my training and promotion in my place of work with my wife's transfer in her place of work. And the Lord blesses my, blesses my family with our own house. Somebody say amen. You are taking that. So to lose number two. Give me the next one. I pray it goes round. If it doesn't, um, we'll share. Whole, this is third one, right? Wholeness in, wholeness in health for my parents, myself and my brother. Success in my examinations. Provision of my choice job. Increase in finance. Favor with God. Thank God we have one week. Who is doing that? So Mr. Siobe is doing number three. Please, as you are taking these prayers, you are not playing, or you will pray. You will pray every day. It can be 10, 15 minutes. Um, I don't know what your work schedule is, but pray for this person. From now, Sunday to Sunday is one week, right? So Sunday, you will come and give. 
listen to this instruction please everybody listen let media do what they are doing on sunday you are coming back to worship god over the prayer you have prayed over the person so sunday will be thanksgiving for you you will give thanks for the person is that okay is that okay the bible says we thanks if you make your request no is this number three have we done this this is the next one this is four is this four increase on all sides and capacity to handle this increase this is serious who's taking that ah uh, three people raise that four people wow you you are you she? you you raised your hand <laughs> oh wait oh, okay if you are choosing seats to sow you're someone i think i know what you're doing okay you're smart that's good that's good okay we'll begin from my vk one then mrs vera will do the next one so let's go next one this is number what abk is number what four please don't forget hope you know your numbers number five number five a job that provides for my needs and makes me abound in every good work so mrs uh, vera will take that one number five number six ah it's 20 something so let's pace up god gives me the kingdom god gives me kingdom marriage he ordained to fulfill his purpose from from the very foundation of his, from the world of the world of the earth i beg your pardon this is powerful who's taking this one okay so um dr dami is taking this that's number six is that fine good number seven the fulfillment of my promise the fulfillment of the promise of our me and my husband our own okay let me just do the fulfillment of fulfillment of our own property strength and ease and safe delivery who is taking that praise the way you raised your hand like there's insight to that so we're giving it to him number what seven, seven. good good huh timothy seven who is next please okay what you are doing is that people that have taken out they are sitting down no you shouldn't sit down stand you are going to start the prayer from here two minutes then you go home and continue okay number what is this we still have a lot we do i'm going to go i am trusting god to grant me wisdom understanding to lead and take decisions for my family for the family god has entrusted into my care also pray for total restoration of my mom's health that she will walk on her two legs permit me to ha ha uh, add her own two legs without support in jesus name who is taking that mrs adetunji number eight is that correct uh media is that eight mr uh, mr adetunji number eight next verse i say next verse <laughs> next one the healing of my body this is powerful healing of my body mr mr dakbo okay that's number what number nine number nine god should bless my family with children god god my master no this must be a mistake god should bless my family with children maybe got my master and phd overseas possible god should make or god makes my master and phd overseas possible god should bless my husband with a new high paying job so this is a woman right i should bless my family with children my masters and phd overseas possible i will release you it's okay it's okay god should bless uh, god, uh in jesus name you have it god should bless my husband <laughs> with new high paying job <laughs> praise god all right that's who is taking that that's a good seat. you are taking that so mr maiwa will take that that's number 10. so we have 10 more. 21 huh media is it 20 or 21 i hope we don't have anyone coming again okay good god prepare me financially spiritually and emotionally for marriage who is taking this one ah how do we do this jesus christ so i will pick since your husband has taken your husband took nine so you took you take 11 right is that okay 11. so she's you're praying for them mrs pharaoh or ladakbo praise god they are laughing at me because i'm still learning the pronunciation but it's fine thanking god for my life is this the next one this is next one 12. thanking god for my life and for my parents for good health growth in my business in my relationship spiritually financial stability a steady flow of income powerful who's taking that one mr abimbola is taking that one that's number 
12. Number 13, quickly, please. I pray that God will give every member of my family a perfect and clean health bill. Praise God. In Jesus' name. And I pray that God bless the works of my hands. In Jesus' name. Who's taking this? Mr. Chigose is taking this. Number 13, right? 13. Next one. Open doors for my husband's business. This is, this is a woman. Open, God, open door for my husband's business. God should send investors to his business that will invest and stay in the business. In Jesus' name. Their divine favor on my new position. Wisdom and insight to deliver divine wisdom upon my children and excellent spirit in their academics more grace anointing upon my ministry who's taking this this one's for one week if i tell you take monday tuesday Thursday, Friday, you'll be good one week one week who's taking i said one week who's taking this one okay um, uh, mr Shobie. so that's number help me now no uh, i hope you're counting 14 15 healing upon my body and special and especially my eyes good healing upon my mother-in-law healing upon my sister's eyes healing upon my dad who is taking this one this is a healing one mr bright that's a good seat for you anyway uh, yeah that's a good seat for you mr bright or mogba number 15 15. Ah. bright was 15 so this is 16. okay peace in my home and marriage and healing on my body who's taking that one 17 16 16 who is taking this one we are not done now there are people here are we done okay they don't want to add that one mr kachi next one how many people have not taken here they are standing here one two Uh, you have to take one trust god for a job and increase financially believing god for a god-fearing life partner this 17. Huh? 17. trusting god for a job and increase financially believing god for a god-fearing life partner healing and transformation salvation for my father and my brother okay i think i know this person uh, um so who's taking this mr emmanuel right so we'll be taking that that's number number 17 so let's go to 18. trust uh, spiritual growth and stability upliftment in my career help from the lord to overcome sexual sin it's a powerful prayer point who's taking that don't run away because you had sex no no i, I will come back here i want it uh, you, you have not taken them yeah you, you have not taken i'm yeah, sorry please receive that What is that? Number what? 18. So I'm coming again. We just sent more. I knew it. I knew that people will be sending. That's, that's how our people will be here. Yeah, give me the next one. What's the next one? We've given this one. Right? Okay, global financial breakthrough and right character to support it for generations to come. That's a huge one. Have you taken? Uh, so take this one. You want to take this one? So take it. Number what? Number what? Just look at me. This is what? This is 19. 19. So you just go to him. He'll give it to you. Okay. Next one. D 20. Divine protection on what God has given me. God to destroy foundational powers of my father's house, total deliverance of my family, God to bring forth the spouses of my, of my daughters. This is online. Okay, this is, this is, this is uh, it's an elderly person. God to bring forth spouses of my daughters, to love more and be more dedicated to things of God, good health and godly prosperity. Who's taking this? I'm going to give it to you. It's a good seed to sow. Who do I give it to? Ah, if I give one person, people will think pastor is doing partiality. So is it every prayer is important. So I'll just give random. Is that okay? Um, um, who's trusting God for a daughter? 
12. Ha. Okay, three of you are trusting God for a daughter. How many prayer points do we have here? One, two, three, four, five, six. So, this is what I will do. I will give the three of you the prayer to pray. You add it. Is that okay? Sow this seed very well. Very well. Three of you. Ah. Mrs. Osiobe, Mrs. Uh, Owosheni, and Mrs. Abimbola. It's the seed for them. What next? Our Father in heaven, we do a new thing in my life. Family and business. Old garments are swapped for new clothes. I like this. As we move into new capacities to effect God's plan on the earth through my hands. Is this a scripture or a prayer? It's a prayer, sir. Okay, so just turn it to a prayer. Have you heard that statement before? Turn it to a prayer. So you turn this to a prayer. Who do I give this one? Mrs. Adetunji is taking this one. So, Mrs. Adetunji, what's your first number? So, I think, what's this one? Uh -huh. So, what, what's this one? Number what? How many more do we have to go? Oh, yeah. So, let's go, let's go so we can close. Wow. Our time is fast, right? We need to be at 12.30. All right, quickly. Our Father in heaven, uh, no. I went, I want the love of God to be deeply rooted in me. Father, give me a man after your heart that loves you with his all. So, she wants to love God and she needs a man that loves God. Is that correct? Yes. Powerful prayer point. Who is taking that one? Mrs. Vera Austin. Okay. I am trusting God for a new high paying job that will not affect my service in the house of God. This is mature. Manifesting on my brother's business, manifestation on my brother's business and make his brand name visible in the industry. Trusting God for divine connection for the fulfillment of God's promise on my career. Who is taking this? The three of you. The three of you. Mr. Bimbola, Mr. Mayowa, Mr. Chigose. You too. <laughs> they are smart Christians. So add him too. Add Mr. Did you get them? Uh, Mr. Bimbola, Mr. Mayowa, Mr. Chigose, Mr. Timothy. So how many people were grouped to take a prayer point? You people. And you people. So how many prayer points do you have together? Two. You have two prayer points. So please, I don't know. Um, my, just follow me. I need to note them. Send me their names. The people that are praying for more than one prayer point. The groups. Thank you. The groups that are praying. Use two groups. Send it to me. I need it for something. Is that okay? Can we do this in five minutes? Do you know your prayer points? If you don't know your prayer points, raise your hand. Okay, some of them were much. Okay, this is what you do. You start today by praying in the Holy Ghost. Is that okay? You pray in the Holy Ghost. When you go home, you start praying in your understanding. So raise your voice and pray for five minutes in the Holy Ghost. Five minutes in the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost know the knows the person you are praying for. So just pray. He will help you in the Holy Ghost. Five minutes. He will help you. Five minutes. When Job prayed for his friends, his captivity was torn. This is a seed. Money is not the only seed. Prayer is a seed. In the Holy Ghost, pray. Five minutes and we'll be done. In the Holy Ghost. Any other thing? Five minutes in the Holy Ghost. Pray for the person. Pray for the person. Kaskababriana vaso pakatana da bahakazi anotose. Ekata salabakata mana kaskata baha. If my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven. I will hear and I will heal their land. God is healing people answering prayers. Pray in the Holy Spirit. Pray in the Holy Spirit. Pray in the Holy Spirit. Shanda bakas kabala badi abada kas katanda. Beredigli sufro kosa pavi anakasa vradi atokanas. Brete kese te vrene kese se vrene gediya sapana. Brako faso te begezi afrana gahasa. Remember you are not praying for yourself Don't forget that You are praying for somebody 
you are praying for somebody you pray for yourself this week now this week you're going to be praying for somebody man so tabaka sadaba man do sata baraka si ataka sende belege sata baraba gaviana do jose who told you god does not answer prayer no he does he's a prayer answering god and if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray god hears the prayer of his people god hears the prayer of his people when the church prayed for peter god saved peter as you are praying as a church for somebody god will save the person god will hear the person god will heal the person god will grant the person their heart's desires so what we are doing here is new testament and it's powerful pray pray in the holy ghost from three more minutes three more minutes it's prayer time come on it's prayer time see the braco faca sia to pacashanta see the leke santo para macazia to panagidia listen to basso brana catiana basanta see the leke so para mahandi kesises leko santa balaka hasan in the beligis katabana kasute pakupra maha Zete balaka sente kalakas kadabahasa. Ando likato sata pakasanda bramakazia. Vakata sana bakata vakasa katia nakaha. See what God is doing for the saints. God is healing people through you. God is saving people through you. Some people ask for salvation of souls. God is going to be saving people through you. My God, God will be breaking the hold of sexual sin through you. Manteka sota baka santa barakatia is satana makaha. You can never pray too much. You can never pray too much. So the seed of prayer. Remember when Joe prayed for his friends, God turned the captivity, his captivity around. As you pray, God will be sorting your own issue. As you pray, God will be healing you. As you pray, God will be breaking the yokes of your life and your generation. As you pray, you are stepping into liberty. As you pray, you are stepping into signs and wonders. As you pray, things are happening all over this place on site and online one more minute one more minute pray in the holy ghost your inward man is being renewed hallelujah For those online, just pray in the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name we pray. I just heard something now. The people online, for those online, please listen. For those on Mixer, like YouTube, and Facebook, if you want to be a part of this, you should. Because we have church members online. Indicate to the media ministry. Let them know you need a prayer point. They will inform me and will push a prayer point to you. Is that okay? I want to repeat. If you are part of this church online and you want to be part of the prayer chain for the next seven days, beginning from tonight, and you need a prayer point to sow as a seed, please reach out to the media ministry. How can I reach out to you? Okay. Sharon has indicated. Mrs. Sharon from, from Kenya. Um, we'll move the prayer point to have, have Sharon's contact. Okay? So... I'll send it to her. All right. Who else? Again. So please, in case you listen to this, and uh, is there a place they can reach you even after the service? So people who would watch later, how can they reach you after the service? How can they reach you? So Tony, you know how ministries? So can we give that? Can we put that up? The word City Global. Put that up. The word City Global at gmail.com. Put it on this feed right now on Facebook or YouTube or Mixer. So if you watch this after this broadcast and you feel led of the Lord to sow a seed of intercession and prayer, I'd like for you to send a mail to this mail right now beneath your screen. Or if it's not here right now, it will come online and um, uh, indicate. And we'll, um, okay, we can send it to them via their mails, right? We can send back to them via their mail. So this is it. WhatCityGlobal at gmail.com is the email of the church. WhatCityGlobal at gmail.com. Just indicate that you need a prayer point to sow as a seed of prayer for the next seven days. And we'll send it to you the same day. What city? Is that correct? Ah, that's wrong. So change it. The WhatCityGlobal. 
All right. The word city global at gmail.com. So this is the right one. Have you changed it online? Is it online? The word city global. Please send your uh, interest if you want to pray. If you need a prayer point to pray for the next seven days. And we'll be, we'll be thanking God on, um, on Sunday morning. Now, if you prayed in the spirit, can you take one minute and just thank God for answers? Thank God. Thank God. Just thank him. As you go into the place of prayer from this evening, whenever you want to start, whether it's afternoon or evening, that God will grant you. The Bible says, with thanksgiving, make your request known. So give him thanks. 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 Oh, give him thanks. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Our Father and our God, I have done what you've sent me to do. And Lord, I know that there will be miracles and replications of miracles as people sow their seeds in prayer. I know according to your word, you will hear our cry. You will answer every prayer. And Lord, you will do double for those praying for people. That's what your word says. We are standing on your word. When Job prayed for his friends, God gave him double. I ask that everybody who will be sowing the seed of prayer in the next seven days will get at least double, double, double of their own heart's desires. In Jesus' name. We call it done. In Jesus' name we pray. And let me tell you something. Clapping your hands is a sign of victory. Do it for Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. All right. Uh, we don't have to. We don't need a universal prayer term, right? Everybody can flow. Huh? We can flow. Okay. So get a prayer time whenever you can pray and just uh, begin to pray for the person. So after the service immediately, you see the media team and they'll push yours to you. Please, you may be seated in the presence of God. You can get your offerings. Uh, it's a privilege to receive them. Oh. So, yeah. Sharon, I, I just got your message. You will. I uh, will give you a prayer point to pray. It will be sent to you very shortly. Immediately the service ends. It will be sent to you. God bless you. Okay. Come. Fifa. Huh? Okay. So uh, we have to give Sharon and Fifa. Okay. So. Is that? Yes. You want to give another group? No. Yes, you're welcome. God bless you. Ah. Benedict Wachoko. You guys shouldn't have forgotten that there's a church online. So just know their names so we don't forget. Uh, Sharon, Fife, Benedict, Benedict, I said Benedict, Benedict. Oh, he said he has already signified to you a while ago. Mr. Wusheni. Hmm? We'll look into it uh, so that we can go home. So just note their names, Mr. Wusheni, Benedict, Fife, uh, Sharon. Any other person we forget? They're all dropping me messages here. Okay, Mr. Wushen said I need the prayer points. So you get one, Mr. Wushen. It will to get through to you. Uh, we'll give it to you after the service. Uh, immediately after the service. How many do we call? Four. Okay, so after the service, I'll look into that. That's fine. So please put your offerings together. Check Mix LR in case anybody's indicating so we don't leave anybody out. All right? Please check. Check. Please bring your offerings if you're honoring the Lord and worshiping the Lord with your um, substance. If you're giving, can we have the details on the screen? Your sc this screen is off. What happened? It's off. So please, if you're giving. Why did he do that? That's never happened like that before. Oh, sleep care. <laughs> Please, let's 
give to these channels online. Do we have the channels online now? Media? Is this online? Give, and if you are giving, please indicate what you are giving for. Is that okay? Indicate what your seed is for. If it's offering, if it's tithe, if it's a special seed, that's fine. But indicate so that it can be used appropriately. If you're giving to Tony Ono her teaching ministries, please do that. Can we have the details on screen? As to TOTM. All right, so that's Tony Onoha, um, the account we use for Tony Onoha Teaching Ministries. So you can, if you're giving to the ministry, you can please send your seats there. And also indicate, all right, what you're giving for. God bless you. All right, please, can you stand as we give our offerings? Choir, we just sing a danceable song for two minutes, and then, sorry, my dear, and then we will close. Sorry, we're supposed to close at 11.30. These are usual services for us in this season, so please bear with us. All right. We follow up, we go follow up, follow up, oh, God, oh, so be, oh, yeah, yeah, I know where, oh, laugh, oh, we follow up, we go follow up, follow up, oh, yeah, oh, so be, oh, yeah, yeah, I know where, oh, laugh, oh, we follow up, oh, go follow up, Give him praise and glory. Hallelujah. said hallelujah Amen. praise god forevermore all right have you received something of the lord in this service all right as what paul said i want to repeat what paul said hold fast to that which you have received and let no man take it from you amen, amen. so we we'll begin tonight sowing the prayer seeds do not forget to pray fervently you can't be praying this prayer and watching netflix pray seriously like you're praying for the person and your life will not remain the same again in jesus name all right, is there any other test uh, thing I'm missing? Okay, uh, announcements tomorrow morning. Can, we, can, can you speak, uh, corroborate my announcements on the screen quickly, please? Mixer tomorrow will be meeting 6 a.m. Uh, through 6.20. It has to be 6.20 now. <laughs> 6.20, trust me. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm divided in many places, praise God. No, I'm not divided, as in I can't stay. In, I have to do many things at the same time. So uh, Mixer 6 a.m. This is not physically on Mixer Radio, online radio. Join us for a wonderful time of impartations, prophetic words over the day, and the dew of heaven. And then on Wednesday, online, strictly online midweek service on Mixalara Facebook. No? Do we do Facebook? Midweek? Do we do Facebook? No. Mixalara on YouTube. So join us on those channels and we'll be streaming our services live. God is doing something on those channels and with our midweek services and then on saturday morning is our on ground bible study you don't want to miss it it's usually a time of refreshing just one hour 30 minutes and then sunday morning 9 a.m please bring people to these services on ground and online lift your hands and give him praise i speak over your week you are not entering this week carelessly. You are entering this week preceded by prophecy. Amen. I declare that the Lord goes before you and he makes the crooked path straight. Amen. Everything that has been arranged to stop you or arranged to slow you down. Today by the power of the Holy Spirit, he goes ahead of you and he quickens things for you. Amen. I said he quickens things for you. Amen. He will not just quicken things, he will quicken the hearts of men for you. Oh, somebody under the sound of my voice. May God open the heart of the person that has the power to favor you. I repeat that one more time. May the Lord open the heart of the person that has the power to favor you. They will give you things you deserve. They will give you things by grace you don't deserve. 
in the name of Jesus. Oh, I speak abundance in this house. I speak supplies in this house. Nobody will be stranded financially. Nobody will have a need that they will have to beg for. May my God supply all your needs according to his riches in glory. See this week as you step out, you are coming back safely. Everybody who leaves their home will return. You will get to your destinations. Not just you, but you and your household. You and your children, you and your spouse. In the name of Jesus, everybody that is represented here, that is afflicted with sickness, I ask that the Lord God quickens your mortal bodies. Healing for your mortal bodies. Let every organ in your system begin to walk to the amazement of your medical practitioners. Let miracles take place in your bodies in the name of Jesus Christ. So I proclaim this word over your body that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. And I declare that sickness and disease and untimely death will not dwell in those bodies in the name of Jesus. Go and prosper this week. Go and be fruitful this week. Go and overcome this week. Go and make it this week. Go and triumph this week. Go and succeed this week. In the name of God the Father. In the name of God the Son. In the name of God the Holy Spirit. In Jesus name. So I hear this one. Can I add this? A thousand will fall by your side. Ten thousand by your right hand side. It will not come near you. Can I repeat that again? A thousand will fall at your side. Ten thousand at your right hand side. It will not come near you. In the name of Jesus. So shall it be. In Jesus precious name. All right, can you hold your hands together as we close? Please repeat these words after me. I am the light of the world. I may see the set upon the hill. I cannot be hidden. He upholds all things by the word of his power. And because he upholds all things, he will uphold me. I am helped of the Lord. One more time, shout, I am helped of the Lord. And 2023 is my year of special miracles. Go in peace. Jesus name. God bless you.